right, we are live. Welcome back to Reasoned Answers. It's as good as waging war against Allah's messenger. Today, I am joined by Perfect Dawa and David Wood. Recently, I published on the David Wood archives a video about the top 10 Quran verses that ISIS or other Muslim terrorists love to cite. Classic David video from years ago. Uh, Perfect Dawa saw that video and he wanted to respond to it. He asked David to have a discussion and David generously agreed to do that. So here we are. Plan for today is to play through the video, go through the points one by one and have a discussion on those. Uh, Perfect Dawa, anything you want to say as introduction? Yeah, hello everyone, and thank you, uh, Reason Answer, and thank you, David Wood, uh, to be here so that we can have a, a good discussion. And uh, yes, we want to, <clears throat> I want to solve a problem. I want to actually, <clears throat> I always say, I want to spread the, <clears throat> the message of Jesus, peace be upon him as well, P uh, love one another. So we want to spread love. And definitely we cannot have uh, a love between each other uh, when there are uh, <clears throat> people like ISIS, of course. And I believe that ISIS exists in, um, you know, all <clears throat> faiths. There are people who are extremists and they want to force others to their own beliefs, even in Marxism, North Korea, <clears throat> an example. So. Uh, you know, this uh, behavior, this, um, um, how do you say it? This way of thinking exists in all, uh, you know, faith. And now we want to see if it really exists in Quran. <clears throat> so that's, that's if it, is, it exists in Quran, I have to tell you that, uh, <clears throat> David, I'm a great enemy of that religion, okay? <laughs> and I have been fighting this, <coughs> I have been, uh, you know, I've been banned by all these extremists because uh, Ali Dawa, uh, I debunked him several times and he deleted his all uh, live streams several weeks because uh, he was absolutely debunked. But I was calling just in few minutes, you know. <clears throat> so anyway, um, we can start and see if really Quran says that. Yes, I would say I'm a great enemy of that, okay? All right. And I forgot to mention for all those who like to complain that we're never live at good times for Asia or uh, Southeast Asia or Oceania. This is your lucky day because we're going live here at 5 a.m. on the U.S. East Coast just for you guys. And because that's when Perfect Dawa requested this discussion since he's not in the U.S. David, anything you want to say as an introduction? Yeah, well, it's uh, 5.07 a.m. where I am. Uh, I normally stay up at, uh, stay up nights with uh, one of my sons that I need to keep an eye on. Uh, I normally go to bed somewhere between 6 and 8, wherever my, whenever my wife wakes up. So today I had to uh, get her up early. She may have a migraine all day because I had to get her up, and it's all Perfect Dawa's fault. So I, I ordinarily like Perfect Dawa, but today you might not be getting uh, Mr. Nice Dizzle. <laughs> yeah. All, all right. right. Give, my, my, give my regard to her and say sorry. All right. <laughs> that uh, it happened like this. There, 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 will, there, will, there will be no uh, uh, giving her your regards if I say, hey, I got up because Perfect Dawa insisted on debating. She's going to say, well, then destroy him. That's what she's going to say. Perfect. All right. So with that out of the way, let's pull up the video and look at the first of our 10 verses. Wait, are you going to play the whole video? Oh, no, you want to play the whole thing? Just, and, it's only eight minutes. Just play, yeah, just play it, and then you can pull up the verses one at a time. All right, that will work. All right.
If you really want to understand the rape and slaughter being committed in the name of Allah by the Islamic State, you have to study the history of Muhammad and his companions, a history found in the Hadith and the Sirah literature. But you can get a pretty good outline of the Islamic State's David, message and tactics by reading the Quran. Do you hear it, David? I, just, I hear it. You don't hear it, Perfect Dalla? No, I don't hear it. Let's see if the audience hear it. How, how, do you, how am I hearing it if he doesn't hear it? The, I, don't I don't know. That's a good question. I hear you, but I don't hear the video. And that uh, is the weirdest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah. And, and I could see the indication the audio was going out to the audience. So I'm not 100% sure why, why you're not hearing it, Perfect Dawa. Uh, I would suggest dropping off and coming back and seeing if that fixes it. Or uh, a Perfect Dawa, uh, it will be a slight delay, but can you listen to it on the on the regular stream until it's over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, okay. because I, of course I know them. And um, yeah, we can go through them later one by one, OK? <clears throat> yeah. All right, fair enough. Back to the video. Which Muslims believe to be the direct word of Allah. For those of you who don't have time to read the Quran, here's a top 10 list of the most essential verses for understanding ISIS. In the Bible, Jesus says that God loves everyone. In the Quran, not so much. Surah 3, verse 32. Say, obey Allah and the apostle, but if they turn back, then surely Allah does not love the unbelievers. According to the Quran, Allah only loves obedient Muslims. I wonder why ISIS doesn't seem to have much love for non-Muslims. Believe it or not, Allah's complete lack of love for non-Muslims plays a role in how non-Muslims are to be treated. Surah 48, verse 29. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those who are with him are severe against unbelievers and merciful among themselves. Those who are with Muhammad, i.e. Muslims, are severe against whom? Against unbelievers. They're merciful to whom? Only to their fellow Muslims. But politicians and the media just can't figure out why ISIS is so severe against non-Muslims. There are lots of ways to be severe against unbelievers. Here's one, Surah 4, verse 24. Also forbidden are women already married, except those captives and slaves whom your right hands possess. This may be confusing without the historical context, which you can read in Sunan Abu Dawud 2150. When Muhammad won the Battle of Altas, Allah had already revealed that Muslims were free to rape their female captives. But at Altas, the Muslim army captured certain women along with their husbands, and some of the Muslims started wondering if raping these women counted as adultery because they were married. That's when Allah revealed Surah 4, verse 24, which says that married women are indeed forbidden as sex partners unless they're your captives. If they're your captives, rape them all you want. Allah couldn't conceivably care less that they're married. Heard about any groups raping their female captives recently? What about people who try to stop the Islamic State from establishing Sharia? Surah 5, verse 33. The punishment of those who wage war against Allah and his apostle and strive to make mischief in the land is only this, that they should be murdered or crucified, or their hands and their feet should be cut off on opposite sides, or they should be imprisoned. This shall be as a disgrace for them in this world, and in the hereafter they shall have a grievous chastisement. Notice that there are several penalties, including death, crucifixion, and dismemberment for the vague crime of making mischief in the land. Since the crime is vague, Muslim groups like ISIS can pack all kinds of offenses into this verse. And yet the US State Department just put out a video making fun of ISIS for crucifying their enemies. When Muhammad was completely outnumbered, he had to put up with idolaters. But once he had the most powerful army in Arabia, the message of Islam became convert or die. Surah 9 verse 5 contains Allah's final marching orders on dealing with idolaters. When the sacred months have passed, slay the idolaters wherever you find them and take them captive and besiege them and prepare for them each ambush. But if they repent and establish <laughs> worship and pay the poor due, then leave their way free. Lo, Allah is forgiving, merciful. So kill them unless they convert to Islam. Sound familiar? Surah 
Since idolaters have to convert or die, you might be wondering why ISIS gives Christians a third option, the option of paying jizya, tribute money. Surah 9, verse 29. Fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden, which hath been forbidden by Allah and his messenger, nor acknowledge the religion of truth from among the people of the book. The people of the book are Jews and Christians until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. So the benefit of being a Jew or a Christian, according to Allah, is that you won't necessarily be slaughtered for refusing to convert. You have the option of paying tribute money to Muslims in acknowledgement of your inferiority. Is it just me or is ISIS following the Quran to the letter? But ISIS doesn't just attack unbelievers. Muslims are also targeted. Why is that? Surah 9, verse 73. O prophet, strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites and be unyielding to them. And their abode is hell and evil is the destination. The Arabic for strive hard here is a form of the word jihad. So Muslims are commanded to wage jihad not only against unbelievers, but also against hypocrites, people who claim to be Muslims but aren't doing what Allah tells them to do. The penalty for hypocrisy can vary depending on the severity of the hypocrisy, but when Muslims deviate from core Islamic doctrine, they find themselves in the apostate category, and the penalty for apostasy is death. So when ISIS kills Muslims who aren't adhering to central Muslim doctrines, they're just doing what Allah commands. But what about all the peaceful westernized Muslims who condemn killing in the name of Allah? Sadly, Islam isn't defined by westernized Muslims. It's defined by Allah, who says in Surah 9, verse 111, Surely Allah has bought of the believers their persons and their property for this, that they shall have the garden. They fight in Allah's way, so they slay and are slain. Allah defines believers as those who slay and get slain. They keep killing until they get killed. Doesn't sound much like our peaceful Muslim neighbors, but it sounds an awful lot like ISIS. Muslims are only allowed to seek peace when they aren't in a position to violently subjugate their enemies. Allah says in Surah 47, verse 35, Be not weary and faint-hearted, crying for peace, when you should be uppermost, for Allah is with you and will never put you in loss for your good deeds. When the Muslim community is strong enough to slay the idolaters and to subjugate the Jews and Christians and to fight the hypocrites, peace is not an option. If you seek peace when you should be uppermost, you won't have much ground to stand on when ISIS knocks on your door and tells you that you're a hypocrite. This final verse might seem out of place because it's not about rape or slaughter, but you can't really understand how the verses about rape and slaughter fit into Islam as a whole without understanding Surah 2, verse 106. Whatever communications we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring one better than it or like it. Do you not know that Allah has power over all things? People in the West have been trying to condemn the Islamic State by quoting peaceful verses of the Quran. How can you guys call yourselves Muslims when the Quran says there's no compulsion in religion? But those peaceful verses were revealed before Allah commanded his followers to slay idolaters and to subjugate Jews and Christians and to fight hypocrites. So the most important verse you need to know if you want to understand the Islamic State is Surah 2, verse 106, which lays out the doctrine of abrogation. Earlier verses get abrogated or canceled by later verses, which means that versions of Islam that oppose the sort of violence being committed by the Islamic State are now obsolete. All right, so that is the video. We will take some time to discuss that, uh, beginning with the first verse that David covered, which was, I believe, sorry, I have a list, uh, 332. Say, O oh, Allah and the Messenger, but if they turn away, then indeed Allah does not like the disbelievers. <clears throat> okay. So uh, <clears throat> I have to say that, uh, first of all, I have to say that the only one who doesn't follow the sunnah here is me. You both follow the sunnah with beard. <laughs> yes. All right. Anyway, I'm kidding because I don't believe that that's sunnah. 
<laughs> okay. And I, uh, so I have to say that uh, anyone who wants to read Quran, I suggest that they have to read first chapter 3, verse 7, because it explains very well who can read Quran and, you know, interpret it, how Quran should be read. Okay. Chapter 3, verse 7 says, It is he who has sent down to you, O Muhammad. Uh, it is the book, yeah. In it are verses that are precise. They are the foundation of the book and others unspecific. As for those whose heart is corrupted, they will follow that of it which is unspecific, desiring to create confusion and their own interpretation. So those whose heart is corrupted, they just follow those unspecific verses, all right? And they change the interpretation, the meaning, uh, trying to, uh, you know, to create uh, confusion. And uh, Allah says, and no one knows its true interpretation except Allah and those firm in knowledge. And they say, who says? Those firm in knowledge says, we believe in it, all of it is from our Lord. And no one will be reminded except those of understanding. So um, how those firm in knowledge understand the true interpretation of uh, these verses, they don't call Allah and ask him, but they put them beside other verses. And they say, we follow them, we follow all of them. Okay, all of them are from our Lord. David read uh, several verses that uh, Allah, uh, I mean, he said, Quran says, uh, disbelievers, okay, kill the disbelievers. I would like to share uh, first this um, uh, Quran, the Quranic verses with different interpretation, okay? So uh, I want to prove, uh, I don't know, let me see how can I share this Quran. Uh, Quran, I have to go to, no, that's not, Tago. How can I share uh, in this? Yeah, this so the, uh, click the icon. It kind of just looks like a, a little square rectangular box. Uh, it's supposed to be a monitor, I guess, with a line under uh, it. It's that, that monitor. Share. Okay, yes, I see now. Share. Okay, let me see. Too many Mary says no Muslim authority can agree on what verses are clear. <laughs> no, you say go only to the clear verses. Okay. But I, I will, not I clear. Yeah, I will. I will tell you uh, how to. Well, you know, well, thankfully, we have the ultimate Muslim authority here today who can tell us which verses are clear. All right. So I cannot. I click on it. I. It doesn't. Can you please? Uh, then you do. Uh, uh, you share this Quran. Uh, let me see the, the site. Uh, Islamawakened.com. Islamawakened.com. Uh, per perfect. Perfect, Della. Do you see? Uh, do you see the little? Uh... Do you see the little menu at the bottom of the screen? I'm just yeah, I'm, I'm clicking. Yeah, it says share and there's screen. Share a yes. screen with others. I'm clicking and nothing happens. I don't know why. <clears throat> having all kinds of problems on your end. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because of my browser. Uh, maybe you can do that, uh, Theodos, please. Uh, can uh, you please go? go to, yeah, I don't so know how to. First, do you want me to bring up? I can do that. Uh, yes, uh, please go to this uh, uh, islamavacant.com. And I tell you which verse to bring up. Yeah, so what verse would you like? Uh, <clears throat> go to, for example, chapter 98, verse 6. All right, let me <clears throat> share that. All right. Uh, All right. Really small. Let me make that bigger so people can actually see it. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> so uh, it says, "Rarely those who uh, the one, the first one, those who dispute the evidence <clears throat> in bracket are bent on denying the truth. Uh, be they from among the followers of earliest revelation? So this first one." <clears throat> But the, the second one says, indeed, those who disbelieve from the people of the book, okay? This is kafir. It says, Quran says, the kafir among the people of the, the book and the polytheists, <clears throat> okay? Next one, 
those who reject the truth among the people of the book okay so if you go down many of them have translated this kafir differently okay yeah stop 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 the arabic one uh please just bring down the arabic one if you see it says the kafir okay it is kafir and then when you go down you see indeed those who disbelieve go down and see more rarely those who dispute all evidence uh, i mean you don't understand that this is what does it mean this they disbelieve those who disbelieve and now go to please to chapter 16 uh, chapter 16 verse 83 <clears throat> okay so now I, I would i would like to say about this verse that is talking about <clears throat> they are uh, so, sorry which one was this <clears throat> ah yeah you went to 1683 okay so That's what you told says, me to yeah yes oh don't want you tell me <laughs> no you were fast you were fast yeah it's okay no problem uh, so this verse okay this verse says <clears throat> they are they are aware of allah's favor but still they denied and most of them are truly ungrateful next one says <clears throat> aware of god's grace but they nevertheless refuse to recognize the same people who were saying the kafir in the previous <clears throat> verse they were uh, making it in different way they say uh, saying disbelievers here they say they are ungrateful <clears throat> they are uh, recognizing the, uh, it because they are used to deny the truth okay despite quran says that who quran is talking about quran says they are aware of allah's favor but still deny deny them who are they they are disbelievers and Allah says, and most of them are kafir. Okay, so disbelievers, not all of them are kafir. And in chapter 98, verse 6, Allah says uh, about people of the book, says those among people of the book who are committing kafir. Okay, so either if it is disbelief, either all Christian and Jews are disbelievers or none. So, so who are these people? Kafir in reality is rejecting his commands, which are doing good deeds which are not oppressing people i have a lot of uh, different and there is uh, chapter two verse uh, let me bring it up for you chapter two verse um, 100 uh, i am one of the cover as well myself according quran okay let me see chapter two verse uh, 100 uh, 200 yeah chapter two verse 254 Oh, you who have believed. Uh, no, sorry, this wasn't the, the one I. Uh, let me find it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, 256. Sorry, it says, let there be no compulsion in religion, for the truth stands out clear from falsehood. So whoever becomes kafir against tyrants and believes in God. So I am a kafir because I am a, I reject Iranian ISIS regime. Okay, I have been fighting them. Okay, so here kafir is a good kafir in Quran. Okay, so we reject, we don't disbelieve in the tyrants, but we reject them. So rejecting Allah's commands that Allah says that uh, uh, He only uh, uh, admonish us to uh, yeah, chapter sixteen verse ninety. Indeed, Allah orders justice and good conduct and giving to relatives and forbids immorality and bad conduct and oppression. He admonishes you that you that uh, perhaps you will be reminded. This is all Allah commands. And if you reject it, you are a kafir. OK, so what was that last one? Uh, last one was uh, Two hundred fifty. Ah, the, the last one, uh, sixteen ninety. Yeah, the one I, I, I read. Yeah, okay. okay. Chapter, chapter. Uh, again, I go back to the chapter ninety-eight, verse six. Indeed, so we put those verses beside these verses, and we understand that not all Christian and Jews are kafir. It says not ninety-eight six. Indeed, they who commit kuf among the people of so amount. If I say those people among Americans who are racist. I'm not talking about all Americans. This is language. This is information. Language gives information. So I'm talking about a portion of Americans who are racist, who are, for example, Ku Klux Klan uh, or whatever. You, 
indeed, they who commit kuf among the people of the scripture and the politics will be in the fire of hell, abiding in China. So if you put chapter 98, verse 6, beside chapter uh, 3, let me see, 3, 113, okay? It says, Allah says in this verse, and 14 and 15, not all of them are alike. Of the people of this book are a portion that stand for the right. They rehearse the verse of, uh, verses of God all night long, and they prostrate themselves in adoration. They believe in God and the last day. They enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong, and they hasten in emulation in all good works. They are in the ranks of the righteous. Next verse. And whatever good they do, never will it be removed from them. Allah, uh, and Allah is knowing of uh, the righteous. So, and there are many other verses. This is just few of them uh, that I read about Christian and Jews. So they are not all the same, Allah says. So uh, as chapter three, verse seven said, uh, how those firm in knowledge understand uh, the true interpretation of uh, such a verses that uh, uh, David bring up is that we put them beside each other, all verses, and we say we believe in it, we believe in all of it. We don't believe just in 10 verses of Quran. We believe in the entire Quran. I have to believe in chapter 3, verse 111 to 13 as well. I have to believe in chapter 60, verse 8 as well. Okay, let me... Uh, chapter 60, verse 8 says, Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of your religion and do not expel you from your homes from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. Next verse says, Allah only forbids you from those who fight you because of religion and expel you from your homes and aid in your expulsion forbids that you make allies of them and whoever makes allies of them then it is those who are the wrongdoers so i follow even these verses i'm not just following those uh, just those 10 verses i don't know why what happened i'm upside down everything's upside down <laughs> yes yeah, someone triggered islamic mode so the okay. stream is upside down for a few seconds all right. So anyway, uh, uh, we have to really understand that um, I just uh, was bringing up these, um, you know, facts from the Quran that kafir is not disbelief. OK, there is no uh, a single word in Quran that says that you have to go kill disbelievers or this is the kafir. And that's only only when they attack you. Just chapter 60, verse eight, eight said, OK, only if they and that's the last option as Prophet Muhammad. He was fighting uh, peacefully 13 years in Mecca. And even when they were going to kill him, he ran away. Finally, they were forced to fight back. And Allah says, fight as long as they fight. If they stop fighting, you stop fighting too. Okay, if David would like to respond. All right, so the gist of your argument is that some verses of the Quran seem to indicate that Muslims should be friendly with non-believers and that not all non-Muslims are in fact outside of Allah's group, so to speak. That there are some Jews and Christians who are good and counted good by Allah. Yes, that they will be rewarded. Uh, you know, unlike these extremists uh, say that only I go to heaven and those who believe like me. <laughs> they even don't believe that their fellow Muslims, like uh, if they are uh, Sunni, they say everyone else is a uh, kafir <laughs> and oh, only I yeah. go. Yes, yes. So the gist here is in response to 332 that you're saying that when it says Allah does not like the disbelievers, that doesn't mean he doesn't no, like no, 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 Muslims. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, it says kafir. It doesn't mean disbelievers. Allah says, Allah does not the kuffar, okay? So it doesn't say disbelievers. It's the word is not disbelief. I showed you chapter eight, uh, 16, verse 83, where it was saying that it, they yeah, recognize yeah, the fine. favor of Allah, that, that, but they, they reject it. 
Yeah, uh, just reading the Sahi International fight, you want to say Kafirs, that's fine. Allah does not like the Kafirs. And what you're saying is that okay. that it isn't equivalent to non-Muslims. That's no. people who uh, reject God entirely, is what you're saying, basically. I mean, David. It, uh, yeah, it is just against the Kuffar, and Kuffar can be ISIS, Taliban, Ayatollah, Fascist, Khomeini, Hitler, all of them are Kuffar. Kuffar are the oppressor. I can read for you more as well, okay? That Kuffar are the oppressor, those who reject those beautiful commands of God, whether it's in Christianity, yeah, love we, one another. We got it. We, we got it. I want to give David a chance now. Okay, yes, please, yeah. Over to you, David. All right. So uh, our good friend, Perfect Dawa, goes to Surah 3, verse 7, where Allah acknowledges that there are uh, parts of the Quran that are hard to understand. Uh, that's kind of convenient because we read other parts of the Quran. We find a very different story. Co read a couple verses here. Surah 11, verse 1. This is a book whose verses have been made firm and free from imperfection, and then they have been expounded in detail. 12.1, these are verses of the clear book. 15.1, these are the verses of the book and of a Quran that makes things clear. 24.46, certainly we have revealed clear communications. 26.2, these are the verses of the book that makes things clear. 27.1, these are verses of the Quran, a book that makes things clear clear 28 2 these are verses of the book that makes things clear 57 9 he it is who sends down clear communications upon his servant that he may bring you forth from utter darkness into light so allah over and over and over again in the quran brags about how clear and precise his verses are suddenly we uh, get to Surah 3, verse 7, and oops, yeah, uh, the, uh, the Quran's actually not very clear at all. Now, think about this. Allah brags about his uh, verses being incredibly clear, and then we read verses like Surah 2, verse 190. Allah does not love those who exceed the limits. 2, 276. Allah does not love any ungrateful sinner. 332, which we're focusing on, Allah does not love the unbelievers. 357, Allah does not love the unjust. 436, Allah does not love him who is proud. Over and over again, Allah talks about all these people that he doesn't love. But we're focusing on Surah 3, verse 32 of the Quran. Uh, let me give you 10 quick translations. I won't read the entire verse. I'll read, uh, I'll read it at the beginning. But uh, just the part we're focusing on, I pulled up 10. I pulled up 10. Four are by uh, Orthodox Muslims, two by heretical Muslims, and four are by non-Muslims. So a wide spectrum, a wide spectrum of translators. So the Pictal says, say, obey Allah and the messenger. But if they turn away, lo, Allah loveth not the disbelievers. Allah does not love who? The disbelievers. Now let's just focus on that last part because that's what uh, you know, Perfect Da was focusing on. Uh, so. Yusuf Ali, if they turn back, God loveth not those who reject faith. Hilali Khan, but if they turn away, then Allah does not like the disbelievers. Shakir, but if they turn back, then Allah does not love the unbelievers. Sher Ali, but if they turn back, turn away, then remember that Allah do loves not the disbelievers. Khalifa, if they turn away, God does not love the disbelievers, Arbery. But if they turn their backs, God loves not the unbelievers, Palmer. But if ye turn your backs, God loves not misbelievers, Rodwell. But if they turn away, then verily God loveth not the unbelievers, and Sale. But if ye go back, verily God loveth not the unbelievers. So I'm looking at how this is translated. By Muslims, by Orthodox Muslims, heretical Muslims, and non-Muslims, disbelievers, those who reject faith, disbelievers, unbelievers, disbelievers, disbelievers, unbelievers, misbelievers, unbelievers, unbelievers. I'm noticing a pattern here. Everyone's, everyone in history seems to think that this is about not believing, that this is about unbelief, that this is about unbelief, disbelief, misbelief, whatever you want to call it, rejecting faith, rejecting Islam. That makes perfect sense sense in the context of people who are commanded obey Allah and his messenger you say no we don't believe this that makes perfect sense in light of the verse and so notice let's do the math here if Allah says that his communications are clear and then everyone who walks away from this verse for 14 centuries uh, concludes that it's talking about unbelievers and then we have perfect dawah come along and say 
Well, what it actually means is something completely different. Guess what? Allah is not clear. He is hopelessly unclear. If Allah, the way he put it in his eternal speech, which is supposedly perfect, he had all eternity to figure out exactly how he wants to say this. And he said it in his book where he brags about how clear his communications are. He said it in a way where everyone in history completely misunderstands it, except for, uh, uh, except for a perfect Allah and like three of his friends. Okay. If So in other words, in other words, there are two possibilities here. Either the verse is actually clear, in which case it says exactly what I said. It says exactly what I what I said in the video, and it's exactly how ISIS would interpret it. Either it means what Allah says, or, or Allah is hopelessly unclear, and you can't trust anything he says. I don't know why, perfect, I don't know why you would tell us to go to any verse in the Quran if we can't understand this. If we can't understand something as simple as this, I can't, I can't, I, I'm afraid I can't know anything about what Allah commands. You can give me, you can give me any command that you think is wonderful in the Quran. If Allah is this unclear, if he's so unclear that 14 centuries, Muslims and non-Muslims completely misunderstand the verse until we get to you, uh, I'd say I've got, Allah's got a serious speech problem and he's the last person who should ever be bragging about his clear communications. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I have to say, first of all, those verses, uh, they don't say that uh, Quran is clear. They say that Quran is, uh, you know, mubin. Mubin means that it's evident, okay? And oh, so, wait, 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 wait. So, so, yes. so, everyone, so everyone also misinterpreted for 14 centuries. They also <laughs> misinterpreted all the verses yeah. where Allah is talking about being yeah. clear. You're saying they misinterpreted those. He's not saying, he's, he's not saying the Quran is mubin. Well, he's saying mubin, but he means something completely different. So okay. they, so, so 14 centuries centuries of Muslims didn't understand what what disbelievers are and 14 centuries of Muslims didn't understand what clear is so no one okay. understands the Quran except except you no it's not except me we are it's like you uh, and three others no, you no, and three other people no, in history no, no we are millions okay we are millions and we are getting more and more all right so yeah. I have to tell you I have to ask you a question uh, just be uh, uh, please uh, it's not about winning or losing, okay? Uh, told us, please. I want to see. Uh, I want to see David when I'm talking to him. So, uh, because there there are things coming up on his face. The dog is eating Quran and so on. So uh, <laughs> it's not eating the Quran. It's sniffing the I, Quran. Anyway, so, uh, the animations are triggered by the audience. They're part of my live streams. Okay. So anyway, um, so I would like to say that um, uh, in the past, unfortunately, um, we know that it is not only Islam. It is in all religion. The scholars, they have been, uh, many of them, they are a bunch of businessmen. And um, even today, okay, I have to tell you, uh, David, that we have priests in Sweden that are atheists. They go to to the uh, church and preach, but despite they, they are atheists, they don't believe just because they, they it is their way of you know uh, making income. Okay, so it is not uh, in all religion in Islam as well. And unfortunately, uh, people of the past they were just majority of people they couldn't read and write, so they would. Um, Okay, I'll wait until this pass and then I will talk. <laughs> you keep talking. You don't have to be distracted. Because, uh, by it is, it distracting me. Yeah, it distracting me. So, uh, I mean, somehow yeah, you're distracting I, perfect dawah with your dog yeah, animations. Because, no, because because I'm talking to I I'm I'm in a serious uh, debate. I think yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, uh, if I I've said it many times, David, if I was born in um, all right. I will wait again. So, <laughs> do I have to turn the? Do I have to turn these off? <laughs> uh, somehow you turn it off because it, it's distracting. I, <laughs> I cannot. I cannot concentrate. <sighs> All right, I, guys. I, I can concentrate. You want me to talk? All right. <clears throat> okay. So, David, <clears throat> I said I've said it many times. If I was even today, if I was born in. A remote village of um, right, I will disable the dog animation for you. Okay. Okay. Please, yeah. 
Sorry, guys. I'm just All enabling right. it. Yeah. If I was born in a <clears throat> remote uh, village of Afghanistan today, I would also uh, read the, those verses without, you know, without even thinking because scholars have said that, okay? The scholars, okay, they said Prophet Muhammad split the moon, okay? Which is absolutely trash. Quran goes against that. Quran says in many verses that Prophet Muhammad didn't have a single miracle, okay? And these so-called we, we, scholars- we, we finally agree on something. <clears throat> yes. Now, and these scholars, scholars so-called scholars, they have brought so many, you know, trash, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, stories that all oh, half of the moon fell down in the <laughs> backyard of Ali, Ali Radiallahu. Half of the moon fell down in his backyard. So you want me to believe in such a people? When I read chapter 16, verse 83, and says that they recognize the favor of Allah and they, uh, you know, they reject it. So who are they? They are disbelievers and says, and most of them are uh, kafir. And these people who may uh, in, or translate kafir in another words as disbeliever, they suddenly change it to, uh, you know, ungrateful and other things. Okay. Because they realize that it cannot be possible that most disbelievers are uh, disbelievers. And some of them actually uh, translate that or when chapter 98 verse 6 says that among the people of the book those who commit cough so among means i i understand the language how language works okay so among people means that not all of them a portion of them a portion of christian and jews are disbelievers no either all of them are disbelievers or none of them are disbelievers okay so we have to make sure about this uh, you know, interpretation of the, uh, the kafir, that it is not disbelief, it is those who, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, like, let me, I uh, have to read more about, uh, uh, <clears throat> just a second, <clears throat> um, okay, I have to find it in the those. Um... So, I mean, the, the explanation is very simple. Some of, a small percentage of Jews and Christians accepted Muhammad and followed him. So they are the ones that Allah is not against. All the rest of the Jews and Christians, he's against. Yeah, and the, 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 impression, okay. the impression that you get from the Quran, and by the way, you know, uh, uh, we're talking about Surah 3, verse 32. Uh, that's the exact same interpretation that, um, I mean, in, in fact, the Haleli Khan adds, adds some parenthetical commentary based on the um, based on the commentary of uh, of Ibn Abbas, but mm -hmm. the the commentary there is those if you disbelieve in Muhammad. So the idea, the impression that I get from the Quran, is yeah. that Jews are supposed to follow their scriptures, uh, Christians are supposed to follow their scriptures, Muslims are supposed to follow their scriptures, but Jews and Christians are also supposed to acknowledge Muhammad as a messenger, even though they are commanded to follow their own scriptures. But there are some who, when presented with Muhammad, say, no, we don't believe in him. And this shows that they're not real believers if they're rejecting Muhammad, because we, we supposedly find him in our scriptures. So okay. you've got this test if someone is a true believer, if you accept Muhammad when he is presented to you. And what do you find in Surah 3, verse 32? Say, obey Allah and his messenger. If they don't, they're disbelievers and Allah doesn't love them. Surah 98, verse 6, which calls <clears throat> Jews and Christians who reject Muhammad the worst of creatures. So this is this is not, uh, this seems pr perfectly straightforward. Right. There's nothing confusing here. But if you're going to say that, no, what you really need to do is you need to, to, to sort of piece together an understanding by going to all these different verses, and that understanding completely contradicts the understanding of 14 centuries worth of Muslims, you can do that, but now you're dealing with revelations that are completely unclear. They're so, un, they're so ridiculously unclear that when okay. a group like ISIS raises the banner, they get they get Muslims from around the world, Muslims from the UK, Muslims from France, Muslims from Canada, Muslims from the US, Muslims from all over the world, flood to the Middle East to say, yes, these guys get it. According to you, the reason they all completely misunderstand Islam is because Allah is the worst communicator who's ever existed. All right. <clears throat> Let me please, uh, uh, first of all, I have to tell you that ISIS was created by Qasem Soleimani, the biggest terrorist on the planet. He 
took 2,000 uh, uh, prisoners from Iraqi uh, uh, prisons and took them to Syria, gave them a safe haven, and told them to commit all those brutal uh, acts and shoot it and show it to the to the world so that they Assad can say to the world that if I go, ISIS take the, the you know uh, the power. And uh, uh, what is it? Even Russia, when they went to to Syria, they said that we are going to fight ISIS. But according to CNN, 10% of their attack was on ISIS, and we don't know even they <clears throat> were really attacking them. The 90% of their attack was on uh, Syrian, uh, you know, this uh, <clears throat> free army. Okay, so these are a political organization. They just, uh, you know, follow their masters. And uh, even there was a research, not by Muslims, by, uh, you know by researchers in the West that most of these people who go there, they go for sex and killing, okay? They don't care about religion, okay? So chapter two, verse 34 says, <clears throat> when we told the angels, bow down before Adam, they all bowed, but not Blis, who refused and was arrogant, and he became a kafir, okay? So uh, Satan was talking to God. He became a kafir just because he rejected his command not because he disbelieved in God, okay? There are, I can read for you so many, uh, chapter four, verse 137. Verily, those who believe then become kafir, then believe and become kafir and go increase in kof. Allah will not forgive them nor guide them on the, the right way. So how can you, uh, when you disbelieve, if it is disbelief, how can you increase in disbelief? Every rational person, Everybody who have a little brain can understand that you either believe or disbelieve. You cannot go and increase in disbelief. Kof is oppression. So you increase on, in oppression. You increase on doing perfect, bad things. Perfect, okay? Dawa. It, it's, it's ridiculous to say that you can't increase in disbelief. You can walk up to a person on the street who doesn't know anything about Muhammad and you say, hey, do you believe in Muhammad? You say, no, I, I don't believe. And then you could actually uh, go through Muhammad's life and then the person's, uh, whoa, I really, really, really don't believe in that guy. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, definitely, I have to tell you that that's your interpretation. These are our interpretation. And who, we is, who, 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 is, who, who is who is Who is our? My interpretation yeah. of this verse is what 14 centuries of Muslim scholars would all, all say. Right, so, okay, okay, look, uh, I have to tell you, uh, I have to tell you this, that, uh, wait, uh, let me see, uh, 60 verse, eight, uh, chapter three, verse seven was saying, okay, chapter three, verse seven was saying, those uh, firm in Lali say, we believe in it, we believe in all of it. So do I have to follow chapter 60, verse eight, when Allah says, Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes, from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. So do I have to follow this verse or not? Surah 60, verse eight, no, because yeah. uh, according to scholars like uh, the two Jalals, Tafsir Jalalain, that was abrogated okay. by later commands to fight them. Okay, so I, I, I tell you that now, <clears throat> again, uh, they, these people are the same people who uh, I can bring for you. Chapter 5, verse 38. They, can you bring, please, chapter 5, verse 38 to us? Yep, I can do that. Yes, please, yeah. Okay, so I've, I have to show you that how they missed everything. And yes, Allah didn't make it uh, easier for us. Uh, he could just, uh, th there is a YouTuber, I don't know if you know him, ex, uh, an ex-Christian, David. He says, um, if any God just light up my wet napkin, okay, I, I will convert, okay? So why God doesn't, uh, you know, light up his napkin? Why God doesn't send us a prophet today, okay, and split the moon? Everybody would believe God want to test us. Yes, he has sent his message in this way and we cannot tell him why you did it okay why it was not so clear okay now here chapter 5 verse 38 say uh, now as for the man who steal and the woman who steals cut off the hands of either of them in uh, what is it require requital for uh, what they have uh, wrote okay so let's go down and see and all of them say Thieves cut off their hands. Okay, next one, Saf Safi Ali. Cut off their hands. Go down, please, uh, Theodos. Appreciate it if you go down. Go down. 
So let's see how many of them say cut off their hands. Go down, cut off their hands, cut off their hands. All of them say cut off their hands. Now oh, go up. Kind of hands, now yeah. go to yes. Now go to to the verse to the Arabic one. Okay, please. Uh, I, I wish that I could uh, do it because now I don't know if uh, Todo can uh, show me the cut. Okay, because here those who know Arabic here is written fakat. Okay. Um, this is, uh, I don't know, if you put it on the Arabic, I will show you which one I'm, I'm showing. Uh, put the mouse on the, the Arabic one. It is, no, no, Arabic one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Arabic one. Uh, I mean, as on the translator. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, uh, put, don't need to push. I don't see your mouse, okay? Okay, yes, go up, and then this is uh, the, the uh, thief. This I, is the word thief. The next one is uh, the cut, okay. Show me uh, with the mouse the cut, okay. Uh, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Eric. Okay. So yeah, yeah you know, don't know Okay. So the, the T, okay, the T is very, very crucial and important. The T is a soft T, the, the cut, okay. For cut, okay. The cut is very soft, okay. Now go to chapter twelve, verse thirty-one, please. Yeah, chapter twelve, verse thirty-one. All right. The cut. Uh, okay, here now we read when the, she heard about their gossip, she invited them and set a banquet for them. She gave each one of them a knife, then said to Joseph, Come out before them. When they saw him, they were so stoned by his beauty that they cut their hands and exclaimed, exclaimed Okay, so if you check, they all say they cut their hands. They cut yes. their hands. Go down. They cut their hands. They cut their hands. It doesn't say they chopped off their hands. Okay. So, now go to. So the, what, yeah. what are you, what are you suggesting? Are you suggesting yes, I'm, that I'm the punishment? Uh, no, no. I'm the punishment is just a, just a cut, right? You just cut no, the hand and you don't cut it off entirely. No, 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 no. I'm not suggesting that. You go down now to the Arabic. No, go to the Arabic. Okay. Now go to the Arabic, please. Okay. So uh, if this guy goes away, okay. So now. If those who know Arabic, now on this cut here, the cut on here, there is something called tashdid, okay? Tashdid is a W, if um, if you, uh, I don't know why I cannot share it and put my mouse on the cut, okay? There is a W for those who know Arabic. It is a severe cut, okay? This is a severe cut in this verse, but these uh, ignorant people, they realize that you cannot chop off your hands when you are, uh, what is it? Uh, peeling a, a, a fruit. In reality, in this verse, what they cut severe was their gossip. Okay, they didn't cut anything because Quran is talking about a, a romantic and beautiful uh, atmosphere. No scream, no blood, and this is the severe one. And I can sh uh, prove you um, from Quran that which one is the severe one. Let me uh, bring up the the. How Quran used the uh, let me see frown and those who fight. Uh, uh, let me see. The Quran. Okay, chapter seven, verse one hundred twenty-four. Uh, please, chapter seven, verse one hundred twenty-four. So, well, first of all, you said that so, it was kept gossip, up, their gossip, up, but it's uh, especially yes, yes, their yes, hands. Yeah. Cut yes, yes, so. their hands. What do you okay. mean they cut their gossip? No, no, no. Okay, so look, um, please. Uh, so I, I went. To, so okay, I'm, I'm, I'm more I'm, familiar I'm, with uh, the Corpus no, Quran I'm, website. I'm the same idea, right? It's word for word no. here. Told us, told us. I'm explaining for you. Put it on that cut. Put it on that right, cut. Right, right, right. Cut. Yes. Yes. yes cut. Okay. First of all, cut has been used in Quran 36 times. Okay. Cut a relation is yep. not a we, physical. We can see cut. that right here, right? Okay, yeah. okay. Cut has been 36 times has been used. Hand has been used 120 times. Uh, Allah's hands, okay? The Jews try to tie Allah's hands. Allah's hands are uh, open wide, okay? So there is not hands, uh, physical hands, and some ignorant uh, scholars say Allah has two right hands. It is Allah's power has been used as hands. The uh, Quran says, don't put yourself in a hellfire with your own hands. You cannot put, hand is deed here. Hand is not physical hand. Now go to that uh, cut, uh, you see that 
um, go back to the one which was big, okay? Okay, go back to the to the one that was big, okay? So you see that there is a W on on the that uh, cut, yeah, a, a sign like W. Do you see that? Yeah. yeah? Yes. Yeah. That that yeah. means severe. That means in Arabic that it is severe. Now go to the chapter. Uh, wait, chapter. Yeah, I, I think that's nonsense. Sorry, okay. I, I don't. I'm not an expert in Arabic, right. but okay. even so, I know that, that, right. that okay. that's okay. nonsense to suggest okay. that. Let me tell you. Okay, so why prefix it means oh, severe. Okay. Okay, so that uh, look that I say in Arabic. Everybody who knows Arabic, they know that this means severe. Okay, go to chapter seven, verse one hundred twenty-four, please. Okay, chapter seven, verse one hundred twenty-four. I want to show you where is the severe cut. Okay, no, uh, I don't see the, the the verse. Can I? Can you? Show? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. it, well, it, it's word by word because you want. Okay. You want right, to get yes. to the cut. Chapter seven, one hundred. Yep, I will, I will show the cut off your hands. Yes. Okay, this is this is the cut off. It is the cut off. It is in the verse that uh, uh, we will come to this verse uh, on chapter five, verse thirty-three. That Frown said to uh, uh, that. Uh, the, let me read it for you. That chapter seven. I will certainly cut off your hands and feet on opposite sides. Then uh, crucify you all. Okay. So this cut is a severe cut, and Allah has used it here for cut off their hands. Now, in, I was talking to Farid, uh, David. I was talking to Farid once, and I even invited him to a debate he rejected. I said that, chapter five, verse 38, next verse says that, and if they repent, Allah forgives them. I said that it doesn't make sense that you catch the, the, the thief, you cut off his hands, and then they repent, and Allah wants to forgive them. It's like that you uh, pass the red light, the officer catch you, you ta he take your driving license and he give you a thousand dollars ticket and you say, officer, forgive me. And then officer say, okay, I forgive you. Then you, you expect to get back your driving license and you, he take back the t ticket. That's the forgiveness. Not that he say, okay, go and pay uh, the, 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 what is it, the fine and uh, we take your driving license. I would say to that uh, ignorant office, officer, I say, Please, this is not forgiveness. Forgiveness is that you give me something, okay? So how can you, and that ignorant, uh, you know, guy, uh, Farid, he said that, yes, he forgive you after we chop off your hat, okay? So how ridiculous is this that, uh, and Allah doesn't say for $1, for $1 billion, how can you chop off someone's hand that has stolen $1? This is, the verse clearly says this, that stop their, their action, like arrest them, and if they repent, Allah forgives them. So if Allah forgives them, who the hell are we that not forgiving him? Okay, the thief. So this is what the word says, and this, uh, you know, ignorance, they even have changed the place for chapter 12, 31, and chapter 5, 38. On chapter 5, 38, because they were thinking that, yes, it's obvious that we have to chop off their hands, and on chapter 5, 12, 31, they realized that they cannot have chop off their hands. So they must have stopped, they cut, just cut their hands, which was not even cut their hands. They stopped gossiping, you know, the gossip, and they stopped it severe because they saw the beauty of this uh, Joseph, peace be upon him, okay? They saw that really he is, uh, you know, handsome, and she was right. So, that, sorry, okay? so your theory here is that when Allah says in his perfectly clear word, that the women cut their hands, he means. No, it doesn't say cut their hands. I told it you. Does too. It does too say their hands. No, it, I say that. It says, if, if you want to translate it, told us, okay? Chapter 7, 3, verse 7 said that they need to be interpreted. If you want to translate it, then they chopped off their hands because according to chapter 7, verse 123, okay? That's not how language that, works. That is, that is chop off. That is chop off. Chapter 7, verse. Uh, 123. Okay, That's so they chopped off their hands. Whatever. My point is that you're saying it says their hands. The, no, there no, is no, no okay. doubt that it says their hands. Uh, okay, oh, wait, just a moment. It, but your theory no, is that when no, it says no, cut no, or whatever, when it no, when it says no, cut their hands, it really means cut the gospel. No, the gospel. no, 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 no. No, wait. Either they chopped off their hands or they didn't cut because the cut here is severe. But this but the, trans their they, hand. They, my point. My point is that the their hands is in here. So if you're saying that this means cut off gossip, 
what do you do with hands? What the cutter? They stopped gossiping. No, they didn't cut anything. I so why is there stopped. hands in the verse? You got to explain so the, the presence of the word hands. Okay, I say that uh, when you, this is a, when you, I say, give me a hand, it doesn't mean that you have to give me your hand. It means that you have, uh, I need your help. When Allah says, wait, uh, when Allah says that, don't put yourself in hellfire with your own hands. It doesn't mean hands. It means deeds because you cannot put yourself in. That's why I say chapter three, verse seven says that only those film in knowledge understand the true meaning of them because they put them together. And these people, they realized that these women couldn't chop off their hands. So that's why they changed it to, they cut their hands. But if they, you really want to translate it, if you really want to translate according to the words, then it says they chopped off their hands. Why they didn't put chop off? Can you please t tell me, Jodos? On chapter because 12, it doesn't make one. sense in context. Yes, it doesn't make sense. Exactly. It doesn't Word make sense. So let me explain you sense. how words yes. work, okay? Words have semantic yes. range. The, yes. the same word doesn't mean the exact same thing in every context. So the word basically means cut. In this context, a plain ordinary cut makes a lot of sense. In the other context of punishment, just cutting a hand doesn't make sense as a punishment. So they interpret it as cutting it off. You're actually getting it backwards. It's that they're adding the interpretation of cut off when it says cut your hands as a punishment. It doesn't say cut. It says, I say, it says stop them. And if they repent, Allah forgives them. How can you forgive someone that you have already uh, punished so severe? But let me see. How, for how many dollars you have to cut, chop off their hands? One dollar or a billion dollars? Can you tell me? Yeah. And then another no, thing I is can't that, because your your perfectly clear book doesn't tell me. No, exactly. Uh, I, I, my <laughs> our our clear book said that only those firm knowledge, those firm in knowledge uh, uh, understand the true interpretation of it. Okay, so. Uh, let me uh, read for you. Yeah, so, uh, so the true interpretation is that when, in this context, when Allah says cut the hands, mm -hmm. and in the context of the women, he means stop the deed of gossip, which mm -hmm. is what I said that you said it meant, and then you said, no, 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 that's not what I said, and then you ended up saying the same thing. But in the other context, when he says cut the hands, it means, I don't know. I, actually, you haven't told me what it means in that context. One, but if you're saying one? it always means exactly the same thing, then it no, means no, no, stop the stop the deed of gossip. But by, by the way, uh, perfect. That what what in the name of common sense? Two questions. What in the name of common sense does this have to do with Surah five verse thirty? I mean Surah yeah Surah yeah Surah three verse thirty two. Okay. which we talked about and we've been on for an hour now which means if if this is going to hold since we're not even we're not even halfway through this one verse because you go to 80 80 different verses that have nothing to do with that verse now we're talking about chopping hands off which you brought up after bringing up 50 different verses and we still got we've got what nine more after this so if we're taking like an hour and a half per verse that you wanted to show that i'm misinterpreting Okay. Uh, is this going to be like fifty, like a fifteen-hour live stream? Is that is that is that okay. the general plan? And by yeah. the way, we, we we can we can we can condense this. We can condense this. We can we can give a shortcut right now. Okay. Every single verse for the rest of that video is going to be the exact same discussion. It's going okay. to be me. It's going to be me. It's going to be me pointing out that Allah claims that His speech is clear. Here's how fourteen centuries of Muslims have interpreted it, and here's how. 50 different people, translators, all translate it, and you saying everyone got it wrong except you and three of your friends, and that's going to be the exact same thing for every, sing for every single verse. You're sitting here talking about the, the uh, chopping off hands. It's the exact, it has nothing to do with anything I quoted. But right. notice, it's the exact same, it's the exact same thing. Pickthall says, chop the hands off. Uh, Yusuf Ali, chop the hands off. Hilali Khan, chop the hands off. Muslims, say chop the hands off. Non-Muslim translators say chop the hands off. Somehow we get to the one guy in the history of humanity who finally understands Allah. Perfect Dawah. Do you understand? Do you know what narcissistic personality disorder is? Uh, <clears throat> no. You might want to look that up because uh, anyone who comes <laughs> along and says, yeah, 14 centuries of people who came before me, they're all idiots and morons and a bunch of stupid losers. And somehow Allah blessed me to be the one person ever who gets this right. 
Uh, okay. Despite the fact that Allah brags about how clear his revelations are, and I'm the only one who ever got it. And so the reason that Muslims who uh, who are under Sharia have been chopping off hands for 14 centuries is because the, the, the golden boy of Islamic interpretation hadn't hadn't been born yet. You? Okay. Now, can I uh, respond? First of all, you. Well, I don't know. Are you going to are you going to quote? Are you going to quote 50 verses so, that have nothing so, to do with anything? So just this will be helpful. Yeah. So probably down for one second, one second. I think yes. if you answer this question, it'll be very helpful. Uh, yes. Did you come up with this interpretation on your own, or did you get this from a Muslim authority? Okay, uh, I have to say it is exactly the same answer. Yeah, uh, David would say all the time that I'm the only one. No, we are millions, as I said, we are millions, and uh, we are coming up today. Yes, I told you as well that. If I was living in the past, I would also just blindly follow these uh, scholars, okay? But today we have this, uh, thanks to this internet, we, ha we can communicate and so, people for start. So, so for 14 but, centuries, no one understands Allah until the internet comes along and then no, Perfect Dawah is able to share. No, uh, I cannot say, no, I cannot say, no. I, I don't say no one. Muhammad's companions they, didn't get it. Uh, no, they got it, they got none, it. This none is, of the none of the schools of Islam. They, they got it and they recorded it in the Hadith that you reject? Because yes, you find the hadith to be fabricated, so yeah. how do you know they got it? Yeah. So what, what is your story? Yes, yeah, Thaddeus, I think we can. I think we can condense this in, entire thing and just okay. Every every single verse, I'm going to read it. I'm going to go with the most obvious explanation and interpretation, which happens to be the same interpretation of ISIS, which happens to be the same interpretation as 14 centuries of uh, of Muslims, and uh, Perfect Dawah is in every case going to say, no, he's the one who understands the real meaning after 14 centuries of no one getting it. And so and I said that I'm not the only one. OK, it's a okay, yeah. you. there are millions of others that we've never heard from except you. OK, OK. The, the thing is that they don't allow you to hear. OK. Yeah. They don't allow you to hear because they want yeah. that. Uh, yeah, they, almost, they, almost, they, almost, almost makes you wish that Allah had just said what he meant to begin with. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I have to tell you that uh, we are uh, fighting. We have been fighting uh, Iranian regime in 44 years, a Muslim organization that we are millions as well. And there are others as well uh, yeah, that, around the that, world. That's fine. I, I really don't care how many people are in the organization. Yes, you yes. made your point so, about so, millions. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm so, uh, I would ask you an important question. I'm going to ask you an important I'm question. Just, Is any only, historical Muslim not, scholar not. that you can cite that agrees with your interpretation? And, and I said that they believe that Prophet Muhammad split the moon. I can read for you several verses of Quran that he didn't uh, have is, a scene. Is that a yes yeah, or no? And, no, and notice, 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 notice uh, perfect Allah, because this is this is actually uh, this is actually an important point. You're pointing out that you have all these scholars, and I would appeal to these scholars for interpreting Quran verses, and you're pointing out that uh, some of these guys even ignore what the Quran says, because as you pointed out, the Quran repeatedly says, like a beating drum, Muhammad couldn't perform miracles, couldn't perform miracles. His miracle is that he's, he brought a he brought a book. The book, the but, Quran. Yeah, yeah. He yeah brought, chat, chat, chat. Let me yeah, read yeah. the book. One, 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 sec, one, one second, one second, because uh, I don't think this point is, uh, we want to understand this point. I don't think it's uh, helping you. Um, so these guys, our criticism of them, uh, my criticism of them would be, that they are believing later miracle stories, which were obviously fabricated. They're obviously fabricated and they were fabricated. And we know why they were fabricated, because you even see it in the Quran where people are challenging Muhammad over and over again. Why aren't you sent with signs like, you know, like Moses or something like that? Uh, yeah. So that, so he's being challenged. And that didn't change after Muhammad died. The, Muslim, the Muslims are, are interacting with Jews and they're interacting with Christians. And every time they interact with Jews or Christians and said, we've got a prophet, those Jews and Christians would have said, what miracles did he perform? And so it was embarrassing to not actually have any. But uh, so they started fabricating them. And later Muslims believed that, Mo that, Mo that Muhammad actually uh, performed these, these miracles and so on. So what would our criticism be of these later Muslims or Mus later Muslim scholars who believe that Muhammad actually performed miracles? Our criticism would be, look, these verses in the Quran clearly say that he didn't perform miracles. So what would we be depending on? We would be saying, look, the Quran clearly says that he didn't perform miracles, right? That would that would be our response. Well, guess yeah. what? If I'm listening to you, I can't even trust those verses 
that say that Muhammad couldn't perform miracles because Allah can't manage to say what he actually means. In other words, if you're pointing out, look, the Quran says, uh, even though it, it, it has all these verses claiming to be clear, those don't actually mean that. The only verse you can trust is Surah 3, verse 7, which says that uh, you, you can't always understand what Allah says because he's, 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 he's pretty unclear. Okay, if he's pretty unclear, <laughs> then... <laughs> then, then you can't you can't say he clearly denies the miracles because Allah is just hopelessly unclear. If he says chop off hands and he says he doesn't love unbelievers and he says all these things and you say, well, he doesn't mean any of that stuff. Well, great. Maybe he didn't mean maybe he didn't mean that Muhammad couldn't perform miracles and maybe the maybe these scholars are right. The point is we can only we can only reject what these scholars say by pointing out, look, here's what the Quran clearly says. And the Quran, you're right, the Quran clearly denies that Muhammad performed miracles. Guess what? The Quran clearly says all the verses I quoted in my video, which you're saying uh, are all wrong. If they're if they're all if 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 if, they, if they're all wrong, if I quote ten verses that have been used for 14 centuries to slaughter unbelievers in the name of Allah, um, and Allah doesn't mean what He said in any of those verses. How do you know what He means? anywhere the the quran is basically useless according to you because it, it, it i mean if if it's if it's so unclear that one guy in the history of islam finally understood it what hope do, what hope does any of us have we don't have hope we can't understand oh. it it's a useless book get rid of it and uh let's all go to uh let's all go to the gospel of uh the gospel of matthew <laughs> gospel of mark gospel of luke gospel of john way 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 clearer all right so um, now can i respond i uh, you uh, say all the time one person one person i've said it uh, that we are not i'm not the only one we yeah, are yeah, yeah, yeah no, really notice is. notice it's one so, person please. saying that a bunch of other people <laughs> say it we haven't okay. seen that right it's like it's all like right. it's like muhammad saying that it's like muhammad saying that all the prophets agreed with him and muslims think oh all the prophets agree with islam no you've got right. one guy who says that everyone agrees with him and you're okay. saying you're one guy saying that there are all these people who agree with you when well, every, you. every commentary we pull up says you're wrong we every translation we pull up says you're wrong but you're saying there's this huge community of people who understand it and we're we've only managed to find you somehow so all right so uh i have to go back again to that chapter 3 verse 7 that says that only Allah and those firm in knowledge understand the true interpretation of those verses. How they know it, they put them beside each other. So <clears throat> when people come and say, oh, chapter 54, verse 1 says that Prophet Muhammad split the moon, which doesn't say at all, okay, then you put it beside these verses that say chapter 29, verse 51. But they say, why are not signs sent down to him from his Lord? Say that the signs are only with Allah. And I am only a clear warner. And and I can uh, read more. 635, 637, 6109, 611, 17, 19, 91, 92, 93, 10, 20, 21, 5. All of these verses says that Prophet Muhammad didn't have a single miracle. And yeah, yeah, so, but Allah, but, I, but Allah never says what he, he never means what he says. No, he's no. got he's got according to you, he has some sort of cosmic Tourette syndrome where he wants to say, Hey, live in peace with everyone and just fight in self-defense. But it comes out, fight those who do not believe in Allah. Chop off those hands. And he just keeps he just keeps well, uh, which verse says that those who do not do not believe in Allah can can give me, for example, chapter 9, verse 29. Let's bring up that you brought it, okay? Shall we talk about that chapter nine? Yeah, and you're, and and, and <laughs> let, let me let me make a prediction. You're going to yeah. tell us that the way it's been uh, interpreted for 14 centuries and the way it's been translated by everyone is all wrong, and you're the first person ever no, to would, to to, to actually understand what the verse is saying. No, I would ask you yourself to think that okay, you are uh, yourself have also some you know, knowledge to understand the, the language, okay? For example, bring up chapter 9, verse 29, please, so that we can yeah, I, discuss about that, okay? I, I put it up on the top mm -hmm. there. I, I can bring it up additionally as well, if you want. But it is up on the, the screen there, fight against those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day and do not... Consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful and who do not adopt the religion of truth from those who are given the scripture fight until they give the jizya willingly while they are humbled. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, 
It says fight those people of the book. Those, again, it is not saying fight the people of the book. Say those people of the book who do not have faith. It doesn't say do not believe because not a single Christian or Jew says I don't believe in God and the last day. So they do yeah. not they yeah, believe you, in you God, don't, you, you, but you're, they don't you're have talking, faith. You're talking about intellectual consent. Allah, Allah, some sort of intellectual consent where do you do you acknowledge that uh, that God exists or something like that? The Quran is 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 giving is giving explanation, and you, we've already been through it. Surah three verse thirty two, Surah ninety eight verse six. If you are present, if if you say, hey, I believe in God, and Allah sends you Muhammad, and you say, nope, I don't believe in him. The the position of the Quran is that you don't really, but you're not really a believer. You're not really no, a believer. Is, uh, you're a fake. So you're, right, a big old, so, you're a big old fake. That's the position right. of the Quran. I have to say that it is not belief, it is faith. I believe that David would exist, but I don't have faith in him. It doesn't mean that I don't believe that he, he exists. So it says, fight the, those people of the book who do not have faith in God and the last day. Those who do not forbid that which has been forbidden by God and his messenger. So mm -hmm. these people, they do not forbid something, okay, that messenger has forbidden, okay? Chapter 9, 34, few verses after say, oh, believers, indeed, oh, many rabbis. Oh, we're, 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 not, we're not going to skip the whole passage there. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm all, yeah, so those who do not, okay, by God, uh, sorry, they do not uh, forbid, has been forbidden by God and his messenger and do not follow the religion of truth, okay, until they pay the uh, exemption tax after having been subdued okay so now first of all this is not so first of all this is not something that you have to pay it always this is one time payment okay and chapter 9 verse 34 one time it. payment yes it is i have to tell you Yo, chapter 9 verse yeah, 34. you have to tell us because Allah didn't okay it, let me tell you. Okay, let, please let me continue chapter 9 verse 34 few verse after it says oh believers indeed many rabbis and monks consume people's wealth wrongfully and hinder others from the way of Allah, give good news of a painful torment to those who uh, hoard gold and silver and do not spend it in, in Allah's cause. So these people, they uh, consume people's wealth like they did it in, in Europe, okay, and they uh, averted Christians from the way of God, okay, and they moved them to uh, you know, to atheism, okay, and in Iran, for example, these ayatollahs, they consuming people's wealth wrongfully, and they avert people from the, you know, the, the way of Allah. Chapter 49, verse 14 says, what? the Bedouin say, oh, we hold on, hold on, yeah, we're yeah, not, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah, not going to go. Yeah, let's make sure, let's make sure we understand, uh, we understand the passage that, uh, that we're talking about here, Surah 9, verse, Surah 9, verse 29, so let, okay. let's actually go through this real quick, and uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just point out what, what I see, um, now I, I'm going to go ahead and, I can go ahead and read these, you can have them on the screen or, or not have them on the screen, Thaddeus, I've got them, uh, I've got the verses up right here, but uh, I'm just going to give, because this is what I see, uh, I, I'm going to give Ibn Kathir's commentary and then we'll actually read the passage because Ibn Kathir's commentary seems to match up perfectly with what it says and your interpretation doesn't seem to match up at all with what it says. So Ibn Kathir, Battles of the Prophet, pages 183 to 184 for anyone who wants to look it up later. Allah, so he's explaining the historical background of this passage. He says, Allah most high ordered the believers to prohibit the disbelievers from entering or coming near the sacred mosque. So this is referring to Muhammad. He takes, he conquers Mecca, and then he says that the the unbelievers can no longer take the pilgrimage to uh, to to Mecca. On that, continuing, on that, Quraysh, that's Muhammad's tribe, thought that this would reduce their profits from trade. In other words, if you you know if you slap the rest of if you slap the polytheist of Arabia in the face and say you can't take the pilgrimage to this pagan uh, pagan cube anymore, then uh, you're upsetting them and this is going to hurt your trade. So on that, Quraysh thought that this would reduce their profits from trade. Therefore, Allah Most High compensated them and ordered them to fight the people of the book until they embrace Islam or pay the jizya tribute money. Ibn Kathir then quotes Surah 9 verse 28 and Surah 9 verse 29. 
as Allah's response to the concerns of Muhammad's tribe who are worried that uh, that their trade is going to uh, be ruined and they're going to lose money. And it says, therefore, the messenger of Allah decided to fight the Romans in order to call them to Islam. So uh, so it's a it's a mystery. How is Allah going to compensate us for this money that we're losing? Well, we're going to fight the Jews and the Christians and they're going to pay us money. So that's Ibn Kathir's explanation. Let's read the just we'll just read the actual passage from mm -hmm. the Quran. So Surah, so Surah 9 verse 29 actually starts in verse 28. Surah 9, verse 28, O you who believe, truly the pagans are unclean, so let them not, after this year of theirs, approach the sacred mosque. And if you fear poverty, soon will Allah enrich you, if he wills, out of his bounty, for Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. So what do we have here? Uh, Allah says, pagans don't get to take the pilgrimage anymore, and what happens? If you fear poverty, don't worry, Allah is going to enrich you. So Allah's actually, this is exactly what Ibn Kathir says the historical background is. If you fear poverty, Allah's going to enrich you. How is Allah going to enrich them? How is he going to make the, make the, make the people of the Muslims of Mecca rich? Next verse, fight those who do not believe in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden, which hath been forbidden by Allah and his messenger, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, supposedly Islam, from among the people of the book, Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. So the solution to your loss of revenue is that you're going to fight the Jews and Christians and they're going to pay you to avoid being killed or they're gonna to convert to Islam. Either way, they pay you. But the question that would arise is, why would you fight Jews and Christians? Aren't we believers too, perfect Dawa? Next verse, Surah 9, verse 30. You didn't quote that one. And the Jews say, Ezra is the son of Allah. And the Christians say, the Messiah is the son of Allah. These are the words of their mouths. They imitate the saying of those who disbelieved before. Allah's curse be upon them, how they are turned away. We, we have turned away from true belief in Allah. And we now, uh, we now worship someone else. So Jews and Christians aren't real monotheists. We're not real believers. Have we done anything else? Very next verse, 931. You also left that one out. They took their rabbis and their monks to be their lords besides Allah and Christ, the son of Mary. Yet they were commanded to worship but one God. There is no God but he. Praise and glory to him. Far is he from having the partners they associate with him. Notice, we were commanded to worship one God. We believe that Jesus is Lord. And it says they took their rabbi, we took our rabbis and monks as lords besides Allah. This is saying that we're not really believers. We may believe in God, but we're not real believers. And the, notice, this is all the justification for fighting us. Any other reason to fight us? Next verse, 932. They desire to put out the light of Allah with their mouths. Notice it says with their mouths, not by the sword. This is referring to what we say. This is referring to what, uh, to our speech saying that Jesus is Lord, but Allah will not allow, but that his light should be perfected. Even though the unbelievers notice we're unbelievers in this verse, even though the unbelievers may detest it. So Allah won't allow Jews and Christians to spread our false beliefs through preaching. But how is Allah going to stop us? Next verse one you left out, it is he who hath sent his messenger, Muhammad, with guidance and the religion of truth, Islam, to prevail it over all religion, even though the idolaters may detest it. So how is Islam going to prevail? How is Allah going to silence our speech? How is he going to do it? This is what's the entire context of the pet? Surah 9, verse 29, fight those who believe not in Allah until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. This entire passage explains, notice there isn't one word about us coming and slaughtering Muslims or anything. Every criticism, every criteria, uh, every criterion for fighting us in this passage has to do with our beliefs and what we say and our basic religious practices. And Allah says, that's why you're fighting them. You're subjugating them. This is how you're going to make money. It's one massive money-making scheme. And notice it's Ibn Kathir. That's what he says it means. You go to the text. It's it it's it's it sounds exactly like what it means. If you're somehow reading all of this and saying no 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 this is just peaceful something about self defense or something like that, then once again you're saying Allah is the worst 
communicator who has ever existed. He should be absolutely ashamed that he has revealed these verses, which have led to uh, millions and millions of people being violently subjugated in his name, all because Perfect Dawah wasn't there who to explain ate the to apple? Them what Allah really meant. All right, now I can respond. First of all, uh, we, throughout the history, we know that the Muslims, Christians, and Jews have been <clears throat> living side by side uh, in peace, and uh, there was no such a things uh, in the past. And uh, I have to continue with the, uh, that the verse 929 again says that fight those people of the book, okay, who do not, not all of them, it says fight those people of the book who do not uh, have faith, okay, chapter, I have to read this one it, for it, you. It, it, says, it says if we call Jesus the, the son of God, no, no. that we're, right. we're, not, we're not believers. We're, we're, all right. we're let, not believers. Me, Guess what? What Christian, what Christian that you have ever met in your entire life doesn't say Jesus is the son of God? Okay, name so one, look, name one, la, la, name I, I one. Say that. Yes, I say that, first of all, the, the, I don't know, but I, I, I believe that there are people who say Where? they don't believe in that. Show okay? me one. Okay. Show me one. And I don't have... You can't, you can't, it's, you can't. If you go, if you, if you go to the Bible, okay. the, Even... father, the Father identifies Jesus as the Son. Okay. The Holy Spirit identifies Jesus as okay. the Son. Jesus identifies himself as the Son. The angel okay. Gabriel identifies him as the Son. John the Baptist okay. identifies him as the Son. His apostles okay. identify him as the Son. Men, right. women identify him as the Son. Even okay. the Romans identify him as the Son. Even right. demons call him the Son of God as he's casting them out. Everyone, identif everyone who could possibly identify Jesus as the Son identifies him as the Son. We get to six centuries later, Muhammad comes along and says up oh, you're unbelievers if you say jesus is the son great that's all christians that's all okay. christians and we are all to be fought and violently subjugated you can't just come along 14 centuries after muhammad and say okay. here's what he really meant and it's peaceful it doesn't work like that okay so if that one is the reason that we have to fight christian then why Jews is among Jews don't say that okay they do they right. don't say he that, lies yeah. about them you're right they don't say that you've never <laughs> okay. right the right Allah's a liar you just pointed <laughs> no. out Allah's a liar it says it says the Jews say Ezra's the son of Allah uh okay. perfect Allah show me one Jew in the history of forever who calls Ezra the son of Allah I'll wait right here okay um uh if if they didn't say that then the Quran would definitely not say it. Okay. Wait, so wait, there was wait, a, there wait, 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 wait. Obvious, okay. I mean, uh, this is the Quran. Notice that the Quran pairs this with Christians calling Jesus the okay. son of God. And it says, and the Jews call Ezra the son of Allah. And I'm sure you're familiar with the Hadith, which I'm sure you'll reject, but it really fits together with this. On the day of judgment, we uh, Christians are going to be asked, hey, why'd you worship Jesus? And 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 Jews are going to be asked, why did you worship Ezra? That's according okay. to that's according to Muhammad. That's according to Muhammad. You can say you don't believe it, but that's exactly what's being said right here. It's the Jews. The Jews right. say. The Jews right. say this. We can't find one instance in the history of forever of a Jew saying this. And somehow Allah's just saying it. The Jews are saying it the same way the Christians are saying that Jesus is the Son of God. All right. No, can they I don't. So, so you've got Christians being universally condemned for saying Jesus. So we're all to be fought. And as you pointed out, uh, Jews don't say Ezra is the son of God. And so Allah has to lie in order to put us in the same category it, together so that we can all be fought and subjugated so that he can give the Quraysh money to make up for not allowing them to have, uh, to, to not allowing the polytheists to take the pilgrimage to Mecca anymore. All right. Can I now respond, please? <clears throat> Chapter three, verse seven says, as for those whose heart is corrupted, they will follow that of it, which is unspecific, desiring to create confusion. There, there's nothing on their own, yeah, Just wait, please. And their own in, uh, interpretation. So some people uh, follow just few verses of Quran, trying to, you know, to, uh, create confusion. Chapter 49, verse 14 says, uh, well, hold, on, hold on, before you get to another verse. <laughs> Sorry? Who, Wait, who is creating their own interpretation? Yeah, that's you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Look. I, and, by, I'm, I'm and, not, and by the way, okay. by the way, by the way, perfect, perfect, perfect. Noah, uh, on on the only way I've ever seen that reasonably uh, reconciled. <clears throat> so again, you have all these verses where the Quran is supposedly clear, and then you have three seven, which is uh, no, it's it's actually not that clear. If you go to the the commentators over the centuries, how did they reconcile the claim? that the Quran is, is clear, but it's, it's not clear. Okay. The way they reconciled that was to say that Allah is perfectly clear 
in his commands. He's not so clear on theology because some of that stuff is just really, really hard to understand. And so when Allah, when Allah gives a command, he's perfectly clear. If he's talking about some theological concept or something like that, it might, you, you, it might, it might, be, it might be unclear. Well, guess what? Fight those who do not believe in Allah. That's a command, which means it's perfectly clear. And so if, it's, if, if that's perfectly clear, if that's perfectly clear, fight those who do not believe in Allah and 14 centuries of Muslims understood it and you're the first one who doesn't, who, who says it means something else, then it's not clear. It's hopelessly unclear. So is the entire book. And Allah is giving commands that involve fighting and killing people. And he's being he's being hopelessly unclear, according to you. That's okay. very dangerous. Perfect. Dawa. You would not accept that from anyone else in the world. If the Ayatollah said, hey, we're going to go, uh, we're going to go, we're going to go fight these women. We're going to fight these women who are refusing to wear the hijab. And, uh, and you brought it up. You said, hey, that's messed up. That's messed up. I totally you can't do that. And he says, no, what I really mean is if these women are, uh, are tearing off their hijab and killing someone too, that's all I meant right there. You would say, no, 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 you, you don't get, you can't play around with You can't play around with words like that. If you're talking about killing and, and arresting people, whatever, you need to be pretty clear. And what you're saying is Allah gives these commands. That, that have caused bloodbaths throughout history. And he's just the worst communicator ever. He's It's just, oopsie, 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 got a bunch more people killed. Oopsie, got a bunch more people killed. Oopsie, there's ISIS. Oops, there's Al Qaeda. Oops, there's Boko Haram. Oops, there's all these terrorist groups who are believing what I said. They don't understand that everything has to be interpreted through perfect right. Allah. Okay, now please let me uh, respond. First of all, uh, these things uh, have started recently. Al Qaeda, ISIS, Taliban, all of them have started because of the political situation. We don't uh, want to uh, talk about that because it's a deep discussion. Well, maybe. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I that that, did, that didn't start it. That didn't start it, perfect. Devil. The first generation of Muslims almost annihilated themselves by killing each other. Aisha, yeah, marched, uh, okay. Aisha marched an army. Aisha, yes. the mother of the faithful, marched an okay. army against yes. Ali, the commander of the faithful. They started slaughtering each other. According to you, yes. they must have so misunderstood it. They okay. must have misunderstood Islam. Right. So the okay. first generation of Muslims didn't understand Islam. All right. For sad, okay. perfect doubt. You need to build a time machine, go back and explain Islam to them. Right. They, they okay. definitely didn't understand it from Muhammad. No, it. Uh, they didn't. Uh, it's not about Quran. Doesn't say kill each other. Quran says that if a believer, you know. Uh, kill another believer by mistake what, has to do this. So, so, uh, okay. so, okay. Hold on, hold on one second, hold on one second. You can argue what the Quran says all you want. David's okay. point is that this is the way the earliest Muslims understood it. This is this is the and way, gener this is way generation after generation after yeah, generation yeah. understood it. It's not until uh, until the jihad is finally stopped by more powerful nations who could actually okay. stop so you mean, them. No, you mean Quran says that go and kill each other? Did Quran anywhere say that believers can kill each other? No, it that doesn't is, say. That, wrong. No. Surah <laughs> 9, verse no, 73. That fight, it, that's, on, that's on the list. Yeah. But that's, that, that's, that's, that's the unbelievers. And, that's, okay. the, that's the First unbelievers all, and the hypocrites. Notice those are two different categories of people. And so when ISIS is, and this is exactly what I said in the video, when ISIS is going out and killing Shias, they do not believe that they are uh, that they are okay. violating uh, Allah's commands not to kill your fellow Muslims. They say these are hypocrites. These are these are in a different category. We have to wage jihad against the unbelievers. We have to wage jihad against the hypocrites. These are commands of Allah, and therefore we do have to fight these people. Okay. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> uh, first of all, um, if we want to go to that <clears throat> history as well, it will take time. So I have to say this uh, about chapter nine twenty nine: the difference between faith and belief. Chapter 49, verse 14 says, the Bedouin says, we have believed. Say, you have not believed yet, but... It's so perfect. Say, no one's disputing the point. No one's disputing that it's talking yeah. about having proper belief, proper understanding, no, proper not, faith. Not a proper belief. No, no, it's, a, it's about the faith that you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I use the word faith. I use the word faith. Yeah, one you do not follow. There. Yes, it says that you do not follow no one's what disputing is forbidden. That part. You do not follow what is, for example, in chapter uh, 107, uh, verse 1 through uh, verse I, I'm, 7. I'm, I'm actually trying to help you out to make a relevant point because you're you're saying that it's a it's not about mere intellectual assent, and we agree. We're not in disagreement about that point, so okay. you're wasting your time making a point All right, so I'm, that we I'm agree on. That. So, so right, when I'm, it says, yeah. it says fight against those who do not have proper faith in Allah. Okay, we agree. 
That's still the Jews and Christians, according to the Quran itself. So you're not actually responding no, to no. David's point at all. First of all, it says those who do not, not uh, uh, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, keep, yeah. Keep, keep reading. Very yeah. next verse. The accusation okay. against Christians is that we call Jesus the Son of Allah. That's the condemnation of us. This shows that we are not real believers. Okay, so, but guess what? That is yeah. that is that is every Christian you've ever met in your entire life. You can't be a Christian. You could have, you could in theory have different understandings of what it means for Jesus to be the right, Son so, of God. No, but every Christian, you can't be a Christian if you do not acknowledge no, that Jesus is the Son of God. No, no, uh, uh, David. According to you, I just have to follow these ten verses and throughout every other verses. But chapter three, verse seven says, "And those firm in knowledge say that." We believe in it. All of it is from our Lord. Okay, so I have to believe, and I said that I have to believe in chapter. So you have to believe. Eight. Yeah, you have to believe in, in contradictory chapter, things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, ha yeah you, ha you have to. You have to. You have to. You have to, you have to believe. Okay. You have to believe that all of it is from Allah, yeah, will, and will, Allah says, Allah yes. says that some of it abrogates other things. No, it doesn't say that it abrogates. It either, uh, either bring equal to it or better than that. Okay, uh -huh. so. So yeah. you mean that? Okay, so okay, so wait. You mean that these verses, all these verses, are abrogated? So uh, then, th those firm in knowledge say that we believe in it. All that ten verses are from our Lord, or as you were saying in that video, chapter uh, nine are from our Lord. We believe in all the chapter, but rest of the chapters we don't believe in it. No, chapter twenty-nine, verse no. twenty-six. That. Wait, chapter 29, verse 46 says that, and do not argue with the people of the scripture except in the in a way that is best, except for those who commit injust, uh, injustice among them and say, we believe in, in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you and our God and your God is one and we are Muslims uh, to him. Chapter 2, verse 62. Those who believe and those who are Jews and Christians and <clears throat> Sabians, whoever believes in Allah and the last day and do righteous good deeds shall have their rewards with their Lord. So uh, I'm, I'm, if you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we've, 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 we've already, we've already, we've already, we've already, hang on, hang on one second. Please, we've hang already, on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. One, one second, one second, okay. David, please, yeah, please, please, one second. <clears throat> so if you are a Muslim there, and you say that uh, no, we have to follow those ten verses. Then yes, I I have to tell you that Allah then Allah contradicts Himself. Okay, oh, Allah yeah. said these mm -hmm. things. Yes, Allah said true, these true. things. So, but as a believer, as a Muslim, I do not believe that Allah contradicts Himself. Allah complete His message with these verses that hey, you ignorant ISIS and Taliban. Not all Christian or Jews are the same. Okay, there are good Christian and Jews. Their reward is, is with Allah. And <clears throat> yes, uh, chapter three, verse one hundred ninety-nine. I can read for you so many verses about. No, no uh, I, I don't Christian, think you need to read Christian. any other verses yes. because yes. you're not actually helping yourself. Yes. You're saying yes. that not all Jews and Christians fall into this category, which is what the Quran says. And then it tells you which Jews and Christians are the ones that you need to reject in the very next verse. And in the case of Christians, it's those who say that the Messiah is the son of okay. Allah. All right. So that so, would seem yeah, to be yeah. okay. two so, billion when, Christians. All right. So when no, when you read these verses, okay, <clears throat> as I as a Muslim, when I read these verses and then I go read those verses, I realize that no, Allah didn't mean all Christian and Jews. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's verses. great that you <clears throat> figured that Allah out. I wish other Muslims verses, had figured it out. Yes, Allah says in this verse, and that's what I wanted your help, uh, David. Please, okay. Oh, uh, oh, please. I'm helping you. I'm helping yes, you. Yes, please. I want your help because you have uh, people listen to you. They hear you. This, for example, this Farid. I asked him to debate me. He rejected. He re he hears your voice. Okay. So I have been uh, on Ali Dawas. Uh, there was a, a brother, Christian brother. He said, "I pay your ticket. Come to London and." Uh, to this uh, speaker's corner and debate them. I didn't want to take his money, so we did like this. He took a phone and went to the speaker's corner. Uh, he found Ali Dawa. I was debating Ali Dawa through phone, and after a few minutes, he just left. Three times I managed to call on his channel. He has every Thursday <coughs> live stream, 
every three times he deleted his entire uh, what is it uh, after after a few minutes, I debunked him totally. So if you really want to get rid of these uh, extremist Muslims, okay, these uh, extreme ideas of these, uh, you know, radicals, then you should really, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't, I mean, you you uh, might believe whatever you want, but at least you want peaceful people, okay, you want peaceful Muslims, then you should help me, support me to debate these guys, okay, invite them. Say I want to host a debate with Ali Dawa or whatever, me and them. Okay, I have asked. <laughs> I, I have asked. I have asked this. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, this channel, uh, Modern Day Debate, several times. I asked uh, to debate this uh, Daniel Isis Jew. I call him Daniel Daniel Isis Jew. I asked to debate him. He refused several times. They all refused to debate me mm -hmm. because I can catch them. I can put them in the corner. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yes, yeah. destroy them. Um, yeah, let, let me. Uh, yeah, because perfect, Dawa, you, uh, you, uh, what we agree on is that we we do want a similar outcome. Of uh, we don't want people going around slaughtering, uh, you know, slaughtering uh, unbelievers in the name of Allah and so on. Uh, we just have different ways of of going about it. Um, I'm just going to keep showing them that Muhammad is the most obvious false prophet in history. And okay. so, and and then you, yeah, and then, and, yeah, and so, 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 yeah, so, yeah, so, so notice, so you've got, according to you, the vast majority of Muslims aren't, aren't real Muslims. They've, they've completely misinterpreted uh, uh, everything. So I'll show those Muslims that Muhammad is the most obvious false prophet in history. And you, you may still, you know, you and, and a couple of your friends may actually understand what Allah really means. But uh, then we'll all be good. So you guys can have the you and a couple of your friends can have the accurate understanding of Islam. We'll get all the other Muslims who uh, who are confused. We'll get them all to leave Islam, and then uh, and then we'll all be at peace as Laura. So as you don't want, Islam is concerned. Uh, yeah, you don't want me uh, we, to stop them from believing those stupid uh, stuff. Oh, you of want, course, of course. Uh, yeah, but, but I'll do that by showing them that Muhammad is a false prophet. <laughs> okay. So you you don't want to invite. I, them I take the short. I take the I take the I take the easy yeah, so, route. You're, take, you're taking yeah. the harder route. That, that's not the easy way. I believe that that's that's a. Oh, no, that's, 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 that's definitely easy. the easier way than no, convincing they, they them that like, all they, of they, Islamic history is wrong and you need to they, reinterpret they, they the, like, the Quran. They, but they, I just wanted to point out what that perfect Dawa thinks that David has the power to tell. Ali Dawa and Daniel Hikachu, what to do? Yeah, <laughs> he says, yeah they, If yeah, David tells yeah. them to debate me, they would surely win. <laughs> yeah, when I, when I say when I say jump, they jump. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyway, I mean that you have the voice, okay? You have the voice. I um I don't have that one because they don't hear me. So you can uh, please ask them to debate me because they all run away. They all have blocked me, okay? And I can just destroy them, destroy their their. A hateful ideology and I said from the beginning I hate that religion myself I'm a great when if the, I they ask me I say I'm a great copper towards your your religion okay I'm one of the greatest copper to towards your religion but uh, unfortunately they are all afraid of debating because I know how to you know to uh, debunk them destroy them so would you like to help me <laughs> there's 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 nothing these guys do not listen to me but I'll go ahead and say to everyone in the chat um uh, yeah guys uh, go go tell them go tell uh Ali Dawa and Daniel Kikachu, Muhammad Hijab, Sheikh Uthman go ahead and tell all these guys that they've all completely misunderstood Islam along with all their scholars for 14 centuries and 14 centuries of Muslims and uh, billions of Muslims have all misunderstood it and we've got one guy who actually understands it and they need by golly they need to actually uh, uh Debate have debates with him yeah debate yeah, him. Yeah. debate perfect Dawa Yes. Bunch of cowards, Dabba, bunch of cowards. You. I have to tell you, Ali Dawa goes live every Thursday. EF Dawa, Dawa Wise, they go time to time, they go live. Please uh, call them, they, but they, they don't allow me to talk right away. They, they block me, they remove me. So please ask them that they should debate me if they really know Islam, okay? If they really know Islam better than me, if they are true, if they are right, about what they believe so they have to debate me and i i have the videos on my channel that ali Dawa was debunked and he ran away even on his channel he deleted all his uh, you know live streams he ran away and yeah. i told him oh, ali Dawa is running you, away you said that several yeah, times. we got it yeah we got it we yeah. got it everyone's running from we, it we got it you and uh, Nadir.
Yeah. So, but uh, we'll strip straight to the last verse because the others are all along the same lines, but this one is actually different. We do not abrogate a verse or cause it to be forgotten, except that we bring forth one better than it or similar to it. Do you not know that a law is over all things competent? So you reject the Sirah literature. Uh, so how do you determine which verses are abrogated and which ones are still in effect? Uh, again, according chapter 3, verse 7, everything in Quran, are, none of them are abrogated. The verses are there and we have to believe in it. We have to follow them. Okay. So they are not abrogated. Abrogation is something that has uh, is not in the Quran. So these uh, people, they come up, uh, these are about previous commands of God as well. In the past, they have been commands in the past before Islam, and Allah has abrogated them, yes, and brought them better, better verses, okay? For example, for example, I, if I can say maybe chapter 5, verse 45, uh, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, it is in the Torah, okay? And Allah has made it better in the Quran and says at the end, says that, and if you uh, forgive, it's better for you, okay? So that part is a part that Allah has added to make people to forgive. If someone take your eye, if someone kill uh, one of you, then forgive, it's better for you. Allah says, if you forgive, I forgive your, your sins, okay? So this is about previous verses, previous commands, not about Quran, Quran, everything in Quran, we have to believe in it, we have to follow it, according to chapter three, verse seven, it is not abrogated. And these people, they come up with uh, goat abrogation, about the chapter uh, verses of stoning and uh, uh, breastfeeding, <laughs> uh, you know, an adult. Uh, so they they come with another application that it is abrogated in recitation, but it is uh, the ruling is there. We have to stone adulterers and so on. So <clears throat> these people come up with different abrogation, which is absolutely wrong. Uh, Quran, everything in Quran, we have to follow it according to chapter three, verse seven. Okay. Would that include 930, which you refuse to address, where it says that Christians who call Jesus the son of Allah are rejected? OK, uh, this is this is a uh, you know, it is a lie. OK, so according to Quran, yeah, this yes, is I lie. agree. I agree that Sir 930 is a lie. Thank you for that. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. I'm saying that if you say that Allah has signed, this is a lie to Allah. Yes. but. You are not going to hell because of that, okay? Allah is most merciful and forgiving. Allah says that your uh, your deeds are what is uh, uh, counted in, in the day of judgment. Your scale is what is counted, not your beliefs, okay? Chapter... Uh, so, so, wait, 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 wait. So when Allah says, may Allah destroy them, just right after he describes the Christians, he doesn't actually mean it? No, I say... Uh, it is not that only that doesn't take you to hell, okay? Uh, I have to read for you. Chapter, so you're, you're saying that shirk is, is not a big deal? Is that what you're no, saying? It is, even shirk is, is not about uh, believing in something. Shirk is about what you do. Chapter 107, verse yeah, 1. Yeah, it's about associating two. partners such as no, Jesus it's not about to Allah. Partners. No, it is about uh, obeying. It is about obeying what they... Uh, they teach you, okay? Allah says that they don't teach you anything, okay? So chapter 107, verse 1 through 7 says that, that uh, have you seen the one who denies the religion, it is about, uh, you know, disbelievers, yeah? That is the one who repels the orphans and does not encourage the feeding of the poor. So woe to those who pray, yet are not mindful of the prayers, those who only show up and refuse to give even the simplest aid. So according to these verses, those who believe and those who disbelieve and do the same, they are in the same category. Those uh, sheikh, those uh, leaders who pray and fasting and their car, car is gold. They're, they have $1 billion car collection, despite millions of people go hungry. According to Quran, they are in the same category, okay? So your deeds is what is count, not what you say, not what you, uh, you know, you pray. Allah says, uh, if you turn your uh, face to west and right, is not righteousness. Righteousness. So, is, so does your good yeah. deeds include fighting Christians who say that Jesus is the Son of Allah? Absolutely not. 
Absolutely not. Chapter 60, verse 8, Allah says, Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you. Okay? So you are not fighting me. But I am the, the fighting fight, you. I am fight. fighting Islam. Yeah, okay. I, yes, I fight. am fighting. Now, look, the fight is this, and I'm going, okay, this type of fight. Yes, I'm fighting. Of course, I don't take it as a fight. I take it as a discussion. Okay? So, it, the, the, and I said that even, the, I say that even, Fighting with weapon is the last option, is not the first option, because you have to try to run away. But when Russia attack you, yes, you have the right to fight back. Uh, you know, when uh, Ayatollah fascist Khomeini killing you, you have the right to fight back. This is what Islam allows you. But the last option, not the first option, okay? As Prophet Muhammad ran away after 13 years from Mecca, and he was forced to fight in, in Medina, okay? Yes. So, uh, one more question, and then, uh, I, then I want to hand it over to David. Uh, how do you know it's the last option? Where did you get that from? Yeah, but, uh, I get it from... Because uh, you, well, you said something crucial. You said it over and again, over again, actually, throughout your saying. You say, I say, and then you invent words for a law. No, no. Okay. I say that... Maybe, uh, well, maybe, well, well, maybe well, perfect da was the final messenger. No. <laughs> I say it because I get it from uh, Quran and from the history of Islam that Prophet Where? Muhammad, peace be upon him, Prophet Muhammad, 13 years, he was attacked, he was stoned. How do you know that? Was... that? You reject the Sarah literature. How do you know that, Muhammad? No, no, I don't reject. No, I don't reject. Oh, nice. hadith. oh cool. No, I, well, I got, yes, some, I got I, some commentary on 2106 for you. No, I look. I don't reject hadith. I reject had fabricated hadiths that go against Quran, and this is what I have always been fighting this uh, Muslim extremists. Anyway, so I say that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, thirteen years he was fighting, uh, you know, peacefully, and when they were going to kill him, he could easily fight back, but he ran away to Medina. He didn't want to fight back, and there, when he was forced. Allah gave him the order to fight those who fight you and fight as long as they fight because Allah does not like those who transgress. So this was the order to, that came to, to the Muslim that fight as long as they fight. Okay, And then when they came with the peace agreement, uh, Prophet Muhammad accepted right away. Okay, And he got stronger in peace because in peace, if you are right, you, uh, what is it, people agree with you better than you take the sword and force them. No, we don't. Uh, Allah does not want uh, anybody who convert by, by force. Okay. All right, David, you want to comment on the history? Yeah, just on uh, Surah 2, verse 106, because, um, I mean, it doesn't sound like there's a, there that Allah can reveal anything that our, our friend Perfect Dawa wouldn't reinterpret. But uh, so this is uh, Azbab al Nuzul. This is uh, a Wahidi. So this is the the historical background. This is the situation of the revelation. So no, the, the commentary says that nothing of our revelation, even a single verse, do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we bring in place one better or the like thereof. So that's 2106. The commentators of the Quran said, the idolaters said, do you not see that Muhammad commands his companions with something and then forbids them from the same and commands them to do the exact opposite? One day he says something and the following day he retracts it. This Quran is nothing but the speech of Muhammad who has invented it. It is a speech that contradicts itself. So the unbelievers are pointing out, hey, wait a minute, Muhammad comes along and he says, I have a revelation from Allah. And he tells you one thing. Then he comes back a week later and says, I have a revelation from Allah. And he commands you to do the exact opposite. And you giant morons all just go along with it. This is what the, this is what the, the polytheists were pointing out. Muhammad's completely contradicting himself in his revelations. And you guys keep buying, keep buying into it. And that's the historical background, says Allah, exalted is he, therefore revealed this verse. He revealed this as a response to people saying, hey, wait a minute, why does Muhammad keep contradicting himself, changing his revelations? Allah responds with Surah 2, verse 106, ah, because when he abrogates something, he brings something better. So that's, that's, uh, that's Al-Wahidi. You can go to Ibn Abbas. Uh, I won't read the entire passage because I just want to show you that it's the same idea. 
Then Allah mentions what was abrogated of the Quran and that which was not abrogated as a direct reference to the claim of the Quraysh who said to the Prophet, O Muhammad, why do you command us to do something and then forbid it? So they're saying, hey, why do you come along one day and say one thing and then you, you come back on a different day and say something completely different? Tafsir Jalalain, when the disbelievers began to deride the matter of abrogation, saying that one day Muhammad enjoins his companions to one thing, and the next day he forbids it, everyone's saying the exact same thing. Everyone's on the same page of what this is referring to. The historical background is Muhammad's receiving all these revelations, and they're contradicting each other, and the unbelievers are saying, this is clear evidence that this doesn't actually come from God. This is clear evidence that Muhammad is making this up as he goes along. Allah gives Muhammad the response, no, 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 it's not because Muhammad is uh, making these things up, it's because Allah gives you a revelation and then comes back and, and gives you something the same or better than it. And if our friend Perfect Dawah wants to say that all of that is wrong, everyone got it wrong, 14 centuries of Muslim commentators got it wrong, Muhammad's companions got it wrong, the greatest, the greatest Quran interpreters of all time, they all got it wrong, but Perfect Dawah has it right. It's the same situation. This isn't, this isn't commanding violence, but it's the same thing in that Allah just can't can't say what he means. He never gets it right. And it's he's so hopelessly unclear in all of his commands that it's taken us 14 centuries to find a Muslim who actually understands the Quran. This book is not good. This book is useless. Notice there are only there are only two there are only two possibilities here, everyone. There are two possibilities here. One, Allah means what he actually says, in which case it's he abrogates verses, he commands you to fight, he doesn't love unbelievers, and so on, right? Either he means what he says, or he's the worst communicator ever. And since he's the worst communicator ever, even though he's trying to tell you to live in peace, it actually comes out sounding like he wants you to violently subjugate the entire world. Notice, those are the two possibilities here. If I'm right, then Allah means what he says, and he, he calls for, he calls for something, something in the ballpark of ISIS as the, as the end game. So either that or perfect dawah is right, and Allah is hopelessly unclear, can't say what he means, but he ends up sounding like he's calling for violence. And so you end up still with ISIS and Al-Qaeda, and you end up with all these groups. And don't say they're new. Yes, these are new, but these have been going on for 14 centuries. Notice, what's the difference? Practically speaking, as far as our lives are concerned, what is the difference between Allah saying, fight those who do not believe in Allah, and he means exactly what he says? Or he means something else, but it sounds like he's commanding you to fight people uh, based on their beliefs. Either way, you get a bunch of you get a bunch of jihadis slaughtering unbelievers in the name of Allah. And so I, I don't know what to do here. Perfect Dawah's interpretation isn't any better. His interpretation is uh, Perfect Dawah's interpretation is yeah, he really sounds like he's saying that so much so that he's inspired 14 centuries of jihadis to go kill. But if you really dig real deep, you'll find out his secret hidden meaning that no one figured out until 14 centuries later. Okay, that doesn't help. That doesn't help. If he's that bad at communication, you need to get rid of the entire book because all it does is mislead people into violence. And so we just need to get it, get rid of it. And hopefully Allah will uh, will come along with something a bit more clear. Or, or inspire uh, perfect Dawa here to uh, to say what he what he actually meant. All right. Uh, now I have to say first of all, you bring up uh, ISIS and Taliban and so on. This, uh, uh, if you check 19 uh, before 1979, just Google Islamic terrorism. You cannot find a single uh, you know uh, Islamic <laughs> terrorism yeah. before. Please let me talk. Let me talk. And then yeah. Sorry, sorry. Before sorry. 1979, thank you. You cannot find a single one after 1979 when USA and UK helped uh, Ayatollah fascist Khomeini take the power because they were afraid that the left groups take the power in Iran and they will join Soviet Union. They, and they have been supporting until today. And now, after Hamas attacked uh, Israel, they were talking all that all oh, Biden's gave them six billion dollars, and so Biden has given them nearly a hundred billion dollars. Obama gave them all, nearly a hundred billion dollars. That Donald Trump was all the time mentioning it. And the, all this money they go to terrorism because Iranian regime is a fascist regime that that uh, believe only in money and uh, you know controlling the entire Middle East. So now, uh, 
Uh, so, so please write that real, real quick because I yeah, want to point say, something out. After, after they say this fast, okay, okay that uh, chapter again, I as a believer, I have to believe in all verses, not just few verses that you pick up and say these are these are they don't mean like this and that. I gave you the uh, other verses that they complete the meaning of them, and you say we have to through the <clears throat> entire Quran. No, I say chapter 42, verse 23 anyone who does good to others. Give, we give more good for him in it. Chapter 22, verse 37, give good news to those who do good to others. Chapter 39, verse 10, ultimate good await those who do good in this world. I can read for you so many other verses that I follow these verses. And uh, I, my brother, <clears throat> Christian brother, uh, uh, Martin, who's from South Africa, he gave me a Bible. I wasn't looking for a single uh, contradiction in uh, Bible. I was only looking for beautiful verses of Bible to quote for people. And there have been these extremists who wanted so much to attack Christianity on my channel. I never allowed them. I said, you have no right to attack other uh, religion, only preach your uh, religion. And they always refuse to debate me on Islam. I say that learn first your religion, then uh, uh, you know promote your religion. So uh, for me, I follow, I say always that I'm a Christian, okay, because uh, I believe in love one another, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Any uh, beautiful commands of any book I, I would follow, okay, and I will not throw Quran away because uh, you misinterpret some verses of Quran. I, I follow all those beautiful verses of Quran that some of them I read for you, okay? All right. So first of all, you're correct that you won't find people describing the past as being terrorism because that the concept of terrorism is a modern idea. But you will indeed find Muslims waging offensive jihad against yep. non-believers. It just wasn't called terrorism because mm -hmm. that is a term that was invented in modern times. Yeah, and I would recommend uh, I would recommend everyone get a copy of uh, the, Robert Spencer's book, The History of Jihad. He just reports on what the historical sources say. And uh, one of the ongoing problems is that uh, e even for even for people like me who you know talk about jihad and have debates on it and so on, we're I mean I mean most of the world's population doesn't know a whole lot about what happened with Muhammad but but even people even people like me who actually study it what do what do we actually learn we usually learn uh the historical background of Muhammad so we learn the context of Muhammad's life and maybe we learn a little bit about the uh about the rightly guided caliphs and then we learn about what's going on in the world today so ISIS and and all these other groups and so on and that's and that's what we know if you read the history of jihad, you find out jihad has been completely relentless for 14 centuries. We 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 forget about the past. It has never it has never stopped. It has been at, the only the only times it even pauses is when they run up against people who are powerful enough to stop them. Then it just pauses and they regroup and they just keep coming at you and so on. But uh, yeah, so yeah, Thaddeus is right. You might not have called offensive jihad in the 10th century. Might not have called it terrorism. It's it's exactly the same thing that we find uh, today. Different weapons and so on, but uh, it's exactly what we find. And so, and uh, according to Perfect Dawa, this is all because the golden the golden boy who who finally understands it hadn't hadn't been born yet. All right, can I say? Uh, so hold on, hold on. I also want to say, with all due respect, you do not take all the verses of the Quran. You pick and choose the ones you like, and then you find excuses to reinterpret the ones you don't like. And I'm glad that you you personally are peaceful, mm -hmm. but a, a typical Muslim is not going to be able to look at a verse that says, fight the unbelievers, slay them wherever you find them and say, oh, you know, I think that that really means give them a big hug. Okay, now can I talk? Uh, yes. yes, please. <clears throat> First of all, um, uh, those, those you mentioned that they have done Yes, some caliph, they went and occupied other countries. Uh, I know that Ali Radiallahu was against that because they went 
uh, clearly against those verses of Quran, like sub chapter 60, verse 8, okay, when they did it, because Allah forbids us from fighting those who do not fight uh, against us. And even those uh, fighting not, verses... Not, it, it, he doesn't even say that in Surah 60, verse 8. It doesn't even say that. He, doesn't, he, he no, says, says he doesn't forbid you from being nice to someone. And, and again, that's been, that was abrogated by later commands to fight. Okay. So even the verse you're quoting and pretending it's not, so he, I could grant everything you're saying about abrogation and say, nope, this wasn't abrogated. Uh, the, the Muslim scholars are all wrong saying that it's been abrogated. Even if we say it's not been abrogated, it still doesn't say live in peace with everyone. He's just saying Allah doesn't forbid you. He does, it's, it's, it's not haram if you have a family member who's an unbeliever and you're still nice to that person. He's just saying he doesn't forbid that. It's got nothing to do with, with not, not calling for violence in other verses. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> let me find it. Anyway, chapter, uh, first of all... Hey, um, by, the, by, the way, by the way, Thaddeus, so the, the, the context of Surah 60, verse 8 is... Uh, <laughs> go back to Surah 60, verse 4. So same passage, here's the context. You already have an excellent example in Abraham and those with him when they said to their people, we totally dissociate <clears throat> ourselves from you and shun whatever idols you worship besides Allah. We reject you. The enmity and hatred that has arisen between us and you will last until you believe in Allah alone. Notice, enmity and hatred between us and anyone until they only believe in Allah alone. And this says, this is an example for Muslims. Abraham here is an example for Muslims. This is the same passage Perfect Dawah is quoting, the exact same passage he's going to, to say, see, this is this is peace and tolerance for all. And we have to use this verse, or 60 verse eight, even though it's been abrogated, according to Muslim scholars, we have to use this to, to reinterpret all the all the clear commands to violently subjugate the entire world and in the same passage even in this very peaceful this very peaceful stage of islam the example that's held up is abraham saying guys there is nothing but enmity and hostility and hatred between us and you until you believe in allah alone so sorry christians you believe that jesus is lord nothing but enmity and hatred between muslims and you until until you reject your belief in Jesus and just believe in Allah alone. So I mean I mean I don't know I, I don't know how you do it. The clear I mean some of the clearest commands in the Quran are about fighting unbelievers. You go to a verse which according to Muslim scholars has been abrogated when even if you go back that far, even if you go back to that revelation, it's still advocating enmity and hatred towards everyone who does not worship Allah properly. And so I I, I don't I don't, okay. I, don't know, I don't know what to do here. It, it, so notice if, 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 if Allah is really saying, hey, uh, Surah 60, verse 8, and I say it's, a, it, it's, a, it, it's not haram of you to treat you know, some unbelieving family member nice or something like that. Even if you ignore the abrogation, you ignore all the later commands and so on, you ignore the context, you have to do some serious gymnastics to get, oh, this is peaceful and, and you're, you're actually not supposed to be fighting people based on what they believe oh. you have to do some serious gymnastics here and if, if perfect dawah, if if allah meant what you said there are roughly 487 billion better ways to say it than this this okay. is like the worst possible the way he has said it in the quran mm -hmm. the way he has gotten to his message of live in peace and tolerance with everybody and only fight in self-defense the quran is the worst possible way he could say any of that it has only confused 14 centuries of Muslims. When I look at all the when I look at all the the, the Dawa guys who are exploding in popularity around the world, they're preaching. This is exactly what they're they're not preaching what you preach. They're preaching that they have to they they have to be preparing uh, preparing uh, to go and subjugate and and slaughter apostates and everything else. Why why are that why are they so misled? Why is the Muslim why is the Ummah so misled, according to you, it's because Allah is just is just an awful communicator, and and people didn't realize that these verses are actually riddles. It's like a Rubik's cube. You have to go in and sort it out and try to solve the puzzle of what Allah really means in His book, where He says He's perfectly clear. All right, <clears throat> now I have to respond. Uh, I don't know <clears throat> how uh, why they couldn't understand these clear, <clears throat> you know, uh, 
chapter 3 verse 7 says that uh, <clears throat> we believe in all of it okay and you say that i have to believe only on those verses that says uh, you know fight uh, those and no, you, no, you, no, you you no, made that no, 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 believe several times yeah. you, talk, you believe talk. you believe in all you believe in all of it which oh, means you also sure. have to believe in the verse that says that it's been abrogated uh -huh. Okay. And no, so, I, 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 okay. No, it's not. It's it is not about these verses that it is abrogated. It's about previous commands of uh, God that are not in Quran because they say we believe it. No, they say we believe in it, all of it in the Quran because Allah talking about. Yes, the you believe all in all of it. Lord. You believe that all of it is revelation. Of course, what Muslim doesn't believe that the abrogated verse does? Which Muslim doesn't? still believe that those abrogated verses are from Allah. Of course you believe those ab of course even a Muslim even if you if you go to a to the two Jalals, right? They, they said that Surah 60 verse 8 was abrogated by later commands to fight. If you say, hey, two Jalals, uh is that is, is Surah 60 verse 8 from Allah? Yes, it's from Allah. We believe in that. We believe that's that's the eternal speech of Allah. Of course we believe in that. It just doesn't apply. It just doesn't apply because right. it's been abrogated because yes. Allah specifically says he's been abrogated. Right. And, and, and uh, perfect. That way. If you don't believe that, if you don't believe in Surah 2 verse 106, you're violating your own rule because you don't, oh. you're not believing in, in, in the, in the revelation. No, I, look, I say, I believe in all of it. Okay. When I put them together and I said that, uh, with, uh, Quran doesn't say fight disbelievers. It's, I explain for you who is a kafir. Kafir is Ayatol Fascist, Khomeini, ISIS, Taliban, those who say that they believe as well. Chapter 60, verse 8, when I uh, quote it for you, next verse says this, Allah only forbid you from those who fight you because of religion and expel you from your homes and aid in your uh, expulsion, uh, that you make allies of them. I read for you uh, this one as well. So about fighting, chapter, uh, wait, Oh, hold on. I, I just want to point out again that it's only what Allah forbids. Yes. Allah forbids you from fighting. Yeah, he forbids you from, you from making friends with someone yeah. who is actively yeah, fighting. Yeah, yeah. Per perfect, perfect dawah. Perfect dawah. If, if I say, if I say, hey, you need to go make pancakes for Thaddeus. You need to go make pancakes for Thaddeus. That's one thing. If I say, I don't forbid you from making pancakes for Thaddeus, that is not telling you to make pancakes for Thaddeus. That's just saying I'm not forbidding it. Okay. You can't, you can't, you, you, so, so in other words, what you're doing here is notice if I say, Hey, I don't forbid you from making pancakes for Thaddeus. And you're interpreting that as see, everyone has, all, everyone has to make pancakes for Thaddeus. No, that's not what it's saying. I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not ordering you not to. And again, that's an abrogated verse. And it's in the same passage where Abraham is held up as an example for calling for nothing but enmity and hatred uh, until right. people worship Allah, uh, Allah alone. So none, right. of this, none of this is helping at all. None of okay, none of this is fixing the, uh, the none of this is fixing the Taliban or or ISIS right. and so on. The only thing that's going to fix is is people recognizing that Muhammad is the most obvious false prophet in history. And we can see from this, I mean, we can see from this debate what a disaster it is. Because I mean, you, all right, <clears throat> can I talk? It's just it's just a, it's just a horrible horrible book. Okay, they will uh, those Taliban and ISIS will disappear uh, when. Uh, Iranian regime, uh, the puppet of the West will disappear and uh, all these tens of hundreds of billions of dollars coming from the West to this terrorist regime that is spreading terrorism around the world uh, will, uh, you know, disappear. So chapter two, uh, sorry, chapter two, verse one, 190 says, fight in the cause of Allah only against those who wage war against you but do not exceed the limits. Allah does not like transgressor, okay? So Allah says in though many, many verses that Allah only, uh, you know, forbid you from those who fight you. Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you. Allah only uh, allows you to fight those who fight you, you know, and fight as long as they, they fight. Yeah, so, that, yeah, so yeah per perfect, follow, perfect yeah, dawah, perfect dawah. If, 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 if if you do not have the doctrine of abrogation, you just you just have endless contradiction. Notice, notice. So Surah it two, ver so two, Surah Surah two, Surah two, verse one ninety, and that in that entire passage there. Notice that's years before Surah nine, verse twenty nine. Fight those who do not believe in Allah. 
Uh, notice what that says there. It's it's you're fighting people who do something first. You're, you're fighting people who are doing something to you first, and you're not allowed to fight unless they've done something uh, unless they've done something to you uh, first. And so you're saying, see, uh, you know, I go with that, and then I use that to reject his later completely clear command to fight people based on what they believe, and fighting people because they say that Jesus is the Son of God and things like that. He, uh, Allah can't mean that because of what he says in Surah 2, verse 190. Notice this is the same. This is the same Allah who in that same chapter says that he abrogates certain verses and reveals better ones. That's that's the same chapter. And then he comes along and says, hey, 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 now you have to fight those who do not believe in Allah. And he explains what that means. It's if you say, hey, Jesus is Lord, something like that. You say anything like that. You're not a true believer. You have to be fought. You have to be subjugated. And you're saying, no, 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 no. Because look what he says in Surah 2, 190. That's the same chapter where he talks about abrogation. You're saying he does. You're saying there is no abrogation like that. And that you have to just believe in it all, that doesn't work. You just end up with a contradictory right, mess. So if you're gonna, so by, by the way, by the way, no, notice I, just one more thing. One more thing. Notice, if Allah meant what He said in Surah two, verse one, one ninety, that that passage and the verses that follow, if He meant what He said there, that hey, you fight people if other people are starting it, and then you fight in self-defense, and that's what you do. If He meant that and he meant for that not to change, there was absolutely no reason to, to reveal Surah 9 verse, verse 29. There was no reason for it. They already knew. You already had a command that you can fight in self-defense. You didn't need some other revelation, but Allah didn't leave it at that. He comes along later in the same book where he lays down abrogation as his method of interpretation. And then as his final marching orders, because Surah 9 was the last major uh, Surah of the Quran revealed, and then in Surah 9, he says, now the new, the new marching orders are fight those who do not believe in Allah. And what you're saying is, well, what he really means in Surah 9, verse 29, is Surah 2, verse 190. Well, why did he reveal the new verse then? If that's all he meant, they already knew that. He revealed something new. And the, the clue that should tee uh, any Muslim who's read the Quran that should, that should give you a clue to a meaning, wait a minute, if he's saying something different, the question is, which one came last? Because that's the one that abrogates or cancels the earlier revelation. This is totally straightforward. If Allah okay. means what you said, he means 2190, and he didn't really mean uh, 929, or he or 2190, he, he meant what he said there. He said it clearly. And then 929, he didn't say it clearly at all. He really, really messed up. It's like you're saying to, to, to me and to, I mean, to really to, to, any, uh, to, to any traditional Muslim, who hears what you're saying? It's like you're saying that Allah was becoming demented over time. Like when he was when he was younger, and he's revealing Surah Two. There he, he he's 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 got his faculties. He's on his meds. He he says it clearly. And then later on, he goes off his meds. His dementia kicks in, and he starts blurting out all these things that he doesn't really mean. That sounds massively insulting towards Allah and towards Muhammad and towards the Quran to any Orthodox Muslim. And so it's it's not just this. This is probably why these guys don't want to debate you. It might not be because they're scared of your arguments. It might just be because they don't like you. Uh, don't like what you're saying about Allah. No. Okay. So if, uh, uh, well, what, real quick, real quick, perfect. Allah. I yeah. also want to point out if even if you're going to say that you believe in every verse and none of them are abrogated, the translator has added only. It actually just says fighting the cause of Allah against those who wage war against you. So if you take out the word only then there is no contradiction between this. But you need the word only there in order to justify your interpretation that it really is exclusive. Perhaps you can justify the only from the context, but notice that you can make the verses compatible with one another in a way that's completely different than the way that you would do it. So you can say, I believe in all of it, and it's clear that Muslims are supposed to fight those who fight them and fight those who say that Jesus is the son of Allah and so on and so forth. You don't have to do or, right? It's, it's not an or thing. It's not one verse is good and the other is bad and you can throw one out. Now, Muslims have historically believed that this verse was abrogated. You don't want to say that? Fine. That still doesn't get you around the actual problem because you can reinterpret this verse 
just the same as you can any other verse. All right. <clears throat> can I now talk that? Uh, <clears throat> according to you, uh, I just have to uh, believe in chapter uh, nine. Every other verse. No, 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 that's no, 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 false. We have never said that. You believe you in it all. Came, you, uh, you said it no, late. No, no, you no. never said that. That's a straw man. You've repeated yeah. it many times. No one said we only no have to believe only said this. Only in, in these fact, ten in verses. Fact, yeah, in fact, I, I, I repeat. I mean, I repeatedly said yes. I mean, if you again, if you went to, if you go to. Uh, Ibn Abbas, if you go to Ibn Kathir, if you go to the two Jalals, if you go to any of these, all of these guys would say you believe in the entire Quran. Okay. But so they, would all, they, they would all agree, as would Muhammad's companions, as would uh, Aisha, as would any, I mean, just go to Bukhari, look at look at it talking about all the abrogated verses and so on. Okay, so, uh, um, right, so right. notice, you believe in them I all. Believe, that, but doesn't, I don't that, doesn't, that doesn't mean they all apply. Notice, like Christian... <coughs> Christians believe in the Old Testament. That doesn't mean we believe we're under all of those commands, or that we, or that we, uh, like if it's like if we read in the Bible and it says, uh, you know, cross the Jordan River and take the land. We don't believe. Oh, that's talking to us. We believe it. We believe it's revelation. We do not believe that it applies to us right now. And so, I mean, I, I don't know what to do. It, uh, notice, okay. notice, notice what you're saying again. You're saying it. it Allah really, really sounds like he's saying that some verses of the Quran abrogate or cancel other verses. That's the way Muhammad's companions interpreted it. That's the way 14 centuries of Muslims interpret it. That's what you find in all the Hadith collections. That's what you find in the most respected commentaries of all time. If that is not what Allah meant, then he is once again the absolute worst communicator I've ever... You, you would not... How, how could Allah pass a first grade... A quiz. If he if he's this terrible at communicating, how could Allah write it write 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 anything? If he's this bad, if he's if he wants to say something and he says it so so terribly that no one for 14 centuries understands what the heck he's talking about until we get to you and you're the you're the one guy who has the key to unlocking again, Allah's meaning. Guy. This is not respectful towards Allah. Okay, again, I'm I'm not the only guy. Okay, just let me please uh, read for you that. Uh, I don't understand how people didn't get it. Okay, that <clears throat> I do. Uh, I, okay, the people that you say, how come they didn't uh, get it? So, and I get it, and of course, I say millions of others get it today. That it is not that we have to fight. Chapter sixty, verse eight says, uh, and then nine says that Allah only forbids you from those who fight you because of religion. Chapter 3, verse 113 says, not all of them are alike of the people of the book. So Allah didn't understand what he's talking about, or you don't understand, and this Ibn Kathir and others don't understand that not all of them are the same. Uh, people of the book, a portion of them that stand uh, for the right, they rehearse the verses of uh, God all night long and they prostrate themselves in adoration. Next verse, they believe in God and the last day they enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong. So some Christian and Jews forbid what is uh, wrong and uh, follow, yeah, it says, uh, enjoy what is right. And they hasten in emulation in all good works. They are in the ranks of the righteous. Uh, so, uh, and the next verse also, I, I have read it, so I don't want to read it again. So, uh, you want to tell me that Allah changed his mind? No, look, this is not the way that you say Allah said these things and then later he abrogated. No, no, no. Now they are going to hell because Allah knew that they don't believe. They believe in Trinity. Allah knew that they believe in uh, uh, those things you said, that the Jews, they believe in that. So, but here Allah says that some of them are good people and they go to the heaven, okay? Chapter 3, verse 115. And whatever good they do, never will be removed from them. And Allah is knowing of all righteous. So I I don't want to drag this long, okay? I believe in all of them and I put all of them together and they complete each other, not contradict each other, okay? I know that I have only the right to fight and as, as the last option, those who attack me, Ayatollah fascist Khomeini, Taliban, Russia, if attack me, then I have the right to, to fight back. Not, I'm not, I do not have the right to fight David Wood or Theodos 
as long as they don't fight me, they don't attack me. The only fight I have with you is this way, okay? That's all. So this is uh, uh, understanding of me and millions of peaceful Muslims, okay? That uh, we are, I'm not the only one. We know that. Yeah, yeah I, I'll, I'll give you that there's millions, but that's still only 1% or 2%. Okay. Well, yeah. and, 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 and the, the reason, by the way, the, the reason I'm objecting to that is if you go to those millions of Muslims, uh, of millions of peaceful Muslims, it's not because they're doing what perfect Dawah does and they've they sort of, uh, you know, solved this mystery and so on. They just don't know what the Quran says. Or, if they if there is a command to commit violence, they'll say, oh, there must be some basis for that because they've just uh, they've just absorbed the idea that you're not supposed to fight over these things. Uh, the the way perfect Dawah goes about it. Oh, this verse says this. So we'll take this word and we'll take that word and we'll go over here and we'll we'll assemble it. And it, it, it's, it's like one of those uh, one of those conspiracy maps where the people have all the strings connected all over them, you know, all, to all these different pictures and stuff like this to 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 think that they've solved the mystery. And so it's exactly like that. But but with the with the Quran. And that, no, that's very rare. You can have all sorts of peaceful Muslims, but the way Perfect Dawah was getting to that, very, very, very rare. And I would say completely incoherent. It just doesn't work. I mean, yeah, that's why, that's why I want to debate them and they run away, okay? Because uh, I have to put them, uh, you know, uh, put the verses again, uh, front of them to see uh, if they say that Allah made mistake, Allah didn't know what he's talking about in chapter 3 verse 113 to 15 uh, or, or other verses that uh, he said that uh, Christian and Jews, the portion of them, they, they are righteous people and they will be rewarded. So, and I was telling one of them, he said, that no, he's talking about uh, Muslims. <laughs> he's clearly talking about the people of the book. The guy was saying that which Christian and Jews stand whole night uh, long and praying. He's just talking about Muslim. It was this uh, Muslim cowboy. I don't know if you know him or not. Okay. He was saying, no, it is talking about uh, Muslims. I said, no, it is clear. And they removed me right away because they cannot answer. All right. So it's not about that uh, they don't accept my argument because they cannot answer that Quran clearly says of the people of the book, it doesn't say Christ, uh, Muslims, they say of the people of the book. And the guy said, no, that's about Muslims, okay? That they will go to heaven. And they, these people, they even don't, don't accept that Shia Muslim or uh, what is it? Those others, uh, Muslims, they will go to, to heaven. Only they go to heaven. Shia, uh, what is it? Extremists say, only we go to heaven. Sunni ex extremists say, only we go to heaven, everyone else go to hell, okay? So these people are, you know, a bunch of uh, ignorance when Quran clearly says that uh, your scale is matter in the day of judgment, not what you, uh, you know, say what you believe in. All so right, maybe I think that we're, we're getting, yes, just, very long. Yeah, yeah maybe, we're just repeating. So let me just take a couple comments and questions from the mm -hmm. audience and then we'll wrap. Up. I have to say something fast that I go uh, seven o'clock European uh, time. I go live every Saturday tonight as well. Those who have questions, they are very welcome. Uh, peaceful, uh, you know, discussion. I always welcome on my channel. You can call in and ask your questions. Okay. Hey, uh, let, let me just uh, let me just help Perfect Dawa out. Uh, if there are any of these guys you want to respond to, Ali Dawa. Uh, Muslim cowboy, any of those guys, um, then I, I, you may have been doing this already, but you, you take a clip of something they say, and then you comment on it and show why it's wrong. And then, and then you ask them, uh, and then you say at the end, but I'm happy to debate on this. Why won't they debate me? And just keep doing that over and over again. Okay, because uh, usually they don't say things. They usually all, always just want to debate Christians. Okay, and I say, that's I have, that, yeah, it, that, yeah, that's true. But that, that's what yeah. I mean. But that that they don't control your channel. They don't control no, your channel. So I as mean. far as as far as live streams, if you do live streams, you can talk there. But uh, I'm I saying think. I'm saying as far as uh, videos that people can share, because you want people you you're you want people to be challenging these guys yeah, yeah. for you. And so you 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 say a few introductory words you say watch here's what ali dawa is saying and i'm going to show why he's wrong but here's what he says and you play a clip by him and then you explain why he's wrong and then you say uh but i'd be happy to debate on this why won't he debate why won't he show why i'm misunderstanding the quran or something like that mm -hmm. and that's how you do it all right and i i have videos as well of course uh, where i have caught them and 
the Sheikh on his channel was rumbling when I asked him a question, a single question, and he removed me right away and he started to rumble. Uh, you know, and he yeah, said, yeah, we, we got guys. it. You've repeated it several mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me take some of these comments from the audience. I'm not what I'm not said. This is amazing. I usually just stream myself with no one to talk to at this hour. So happy someone is streaming. I love it. Christ bless you. And so that was to me and the also Dizzle. Thank you for that. We've had a very good crowd here. I had no idea how many people would show up at this hour, but went very well. So something we'll try to do some other time, perhaps. Yes. Winston says the debate was over the moment <laughs> David Wood's video was played. Uh, William says that Perfect Dawah is a member of the Mujahideens. Their leader was an Islamicist. Don't trust this guy. Would you like to respond to that, Perfect Dawah? <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, these guys, they, I don't know, these people don't understand anything when they say these things. Uh, my organization has been fighting Iranian regime in 44 years in protection of other non-Muslims because Khomeini was the, the first Muslim organization that came out uh, in mass uh, protesting against compulsory hijab was my organization <clears throat> because ayatollahs uh, wanted to oppress non-muslims and they could get any power they wanted khomeini was telling them uh, if you help me you get everything but they said no you have no right to do such a things to non-muslims and uh, <clears throat> my organization has uh, thousands of european parliamentarians uh, uh, you know american uh, senators as their supporter uh, Mike Pompeo was just talking to, uh, you know, supporting them, uh, has been supporting them in several years. Mike Pence, Trump's uh, uh, vice president, has been supporting my organization. Uh, nearly 100 Nobel Peace Prize, uh, sorry, Nobel Prize winners and thousands of, as I said, parliamentarians have been supporting my organization because they believe that this is the most democratic and uh, uh, you know, democratic alternative to Iranian regime. Women are absolute equal in our organization. They are all leaders in our organization. Yes. All right, fair enough. So you deny that charge. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Zabubas says, David Wood, this is 7 a.m. What are you doing? Waiting to go to sleep. <laughs> all right, yep. We'll be done in just a few minutes here. Uh, John V said, I'm waiting for him, meaning perfect Dawa to explain you need an extended car warranty. He said, basically said you sound like a sleazy salesman. Uh, Philip says, I don't believe in abrogation. I believe in reinterpretation. That seems to be an accurate description of what perfect Dawa does. I did want to say in, in response to the, to the claim about uh you know, uh, about the car warranty thing. Um, claim normally when you accuse someone of that is like, like a, a, someone who's doing that is trying to deceive you just to be clear. I don't, I don't believe that that perfect doll was trying to <laughs> deceive or, or trick us. I think he actually, but I think he believes what he's saying. We disagree obviously, but yeah, I don't think he's trying to, I, I don't think he's trying to be slimy. Okay, can I say first something that I have I have been living in Sweden 37 years and I haven't seen my home country because I'm fighting Iranian ISIS regime and my brother has been killed by this regime as well uh, among nearly hundred thousands of our uh, you know members and followers have been killed so we are not just saying here something that uh, to please you okay we are really yep. fighting we are fighting them yep. and I could just tomorrow go home to my home country, stop fighting the Iranian regime, but I don't do that. I forbid myself. For yeah, I, I will I will say that as well. I believe yeah. that you are sincere. Yeah. You're Thank mistaken. You. you are making a ridiculous <laughs> yeah. fight for yourself that you yeah. don't have to. You could just reject Islam instead of going through all these interpretation games. But I definitely think you are sincere. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're saying that as people who've been dealing with Dawa guys for many years where we don't believe what they're saying, where we believe that they're actually being deceptive, where we, we believe they're actually trying to mislead us. And so we're familiar with those guys. And yeah, we, we don't think we don't think you're in that same category. Perfect. Ella. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. 
So lots of comments on this being a good time to stream. And I've, the viewership numbers would suggest that a lot of people, perhaps it's an underserved time slot. I don't anticipate streaming at this time normally, but maybe someone out there would like to fulfill that market. Uh, Travis says, perfect Dawa, come on, man. Be sincere and honest with this. You will find freedom if you do that. Come to Jesus. And that's what I was getting at previously. You could, it would be so much easier for you if you just oh, I, said that Islam is false. As you yourself said, Christians can go to heaven. So just give up on supporting this nonsense you find in the Quran. Now, I, I understand why, right? Because your heart is really for Iran and you really want to uh, save your people from the oppressive regime there and you think that reinterpreting islam is the best way to do it but on a personal level you'd be so much happier if you weren't playing all these gymnastics and you just came to the truth that jesus is the way and there is no other all right can i uh, please uh, comment on this <clears throat> my brother christian brother uh, martin uh, who is the admin on my channel as well he helped me with my um, dawa so uh, he always, when he call in, he say, my future brother in Christ, I say, I am a Christian even today, as long as it is love one another, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So I'm a Christian, I'm a Jew. Uh, I even uh, like what Buddha, some of his teachings. So I do not reject anything bad. So, uh, sorry, anything uh, that is good, I do not reject that. In Quran also, I read for you some of the verses uh, there are many, many verses that I, I cannot reject them. So I follow those beautiful commands of God. And uh, <clears throat> I do, like chapter 60, verse 8, I, I'm friendly with everybody. And I want that, uh, you know, spread the message of Jesus, peace with one in love one another. OK, so I want to spread that message as well, love uh, people, everyone. So I'm a Christian, OK? You're not a Christian, though, because you don't okay, have any clue. I Okay. I believe myself. I, I don't deny th what you said that you want no. peace and love and love your neighbor and that you believe that some of the teachings of Christianity are good, but that's not what it means to be a Christian. So mm -hmm. Professor Yaffel here says the perfect Dawa is an example of a brainwashed Muslim who actually desires a righteous, loving God, i.e., he wants Yahweh. Maybe he needs to hear the gospel today. So to be a Christian is not to do good deeds. It's not to be nice to your neighbor. Yes, that is part of being a Christian, but that doesn't make you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is when you look at your life, you acknowledge that you are a sinner, that you have made mistakes, and that you can't do anything to make up for those mistakes. Not really. You know, you, you talked about the, the scale, a common conception of Muslims, but that's not how things work. If you kill someone, that person is dead. If you steal from someone, the, their stuff is taken. If you hurt someone, you insult someone, they are insulted. Doing good deeds, giving a million dollars to the poor doesn't make up for that. As soon as we do one sin and everyone sins, then we fall short of God's glory. We fall short of that perfect standard and we can't make up that gap on our own. So to be a Christian is to acknowledge that situation and then look to the solution that God has provided. God said, I know that you're sinners. I know that, that you cannot be reconciled to me. I could pretend that your sin doesn't matter, but then I would lose my righteousness. Then I would lose justice. I wouldn't be perfect in that way. So there needs to be another solution. I myself will enter into the equation. I will take on flesh, I will become a human being, and I will take all of the sins upon, of the world upon myself. I will destroy them once and for all on the cross, and then I will prove that I am victorious over death, over the power of sin, by rising again from the dead. So to be a Christian is to place your trust in the completed work of Christ for the forgiveness of sins. It is not to do good deeds. That is not being a Christian. To be a Christian is to place your trust in Christ, in Christ alone, not in your own abilities, not in what is the political solution for Iran or anything else. So that is the message that you need to hear. And that is the message you need to accept to actually become a Christian. 
Can you be a good person? Can you do what righteous deeds mm -hmm. without being a Christian? Yes, but that doesn't make up for your sins. All so right. I want you to, I, I, I don't, you don't need to respond to that. I want you no, to no, think just, about that. I just want to say that uh, I respect your belief and that's your belief. So uh, this is my belief. I believe in this way. So I just, we have to respect each other and uh, yeah. live peacefully. And uh, well, our, I, judgment, so, our, yeah, judgment, I, I, our judgment is with God. Okay. Not, uh, I'm not going to judge you. You're, uh, I don't think that you are either can judge me. It is only God who can judge me. And judge yes, you and yes, and, and God will judge you according yes. to your, mm -hmm. he will judge you according to that standard, the standard of perfection, you will fall short mm -hmm. of that standard, and you need a savior. Yes. Now, that is, I, I want you to think about those words and consider it another time, not live now. I, I, I don't want to demand like some kind of response for it. Inshallah. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. So several people asked me to point out uh, Hawaiian CC being just an example of it. I remember Christian Prince and Perfect Dawa. I respect Perfect Dawa, even if he seems delusional, praying he comes to Christ. So several people asked uh, to, to check out that stream, and there was a link posted to it earlier right. on. Uh, I have to say something. Yeah, Yeah, about I was going to say, I, I think Perfect Dawa it doesn't want uh, yeah. you to watch that though. <laughs> he regrets no, no. that. No, I, I, I don't care. I say you can watch it, but the thing is that I said, uh, I've said it. Um, even my brother, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Martin, said that no, he treated you very bad. He, he didn't treat you as a Christian. He was very, very rude. Really, I would never again talk to such a people because uh, I don't. I hate that religion that teaches people to be so rude to others okay it doesn't matter if, it, if you are a muslim you are a christian or whatever he was very rude and at the end uh, he just removed me when i asked him the question uh, he couldn't answer he just removed me so um, uh, i mean you can disagree we are talking now together yeah to, uh, with each other so this is a respectful uh, discussion but the way he was uh, you know and then once i was going to talk to sam shamoon i called him I wrote him and he said, dig your, dig your grave. I said, no, I want to have a friendly discussion. Yeah, no, yeah, you are so my enemy and so on. I said, I said, no, I'm not. And he always uh, used stupid all these words to his, uh, you know, opponent that these people, I'm not going to talk to them ever, okay? Yeah, I mean, David, we were talk, I, 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 now we are I talking very nice. I, I don't need a 20 minute explanation. Right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a perfectly reasonable thing. I don't like the way Christian Prince uh, talks to people. I don't like the way Sam Samoon talks to people. I don't want to deal with people like that. That's a perfectly reasonable answer. I don't need you to go on and on explaining that. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, super chat from Frankly Garcia. If you frequently say it, Allah would pay off your debts. So you can refer to it back again, inshallah. So he says, look at that handsome young David Wood referring to the video we watched earlier. Man, time really does humble all. So I'm not sure which part you're supposed to refer to over and over again for a law to pay off your debts, whether you're supposed to call David handsome or you're supposed to say that he, his former good looks have been humbled. But either way, thank you for that <laughs> donation. I call him Sheikh Isis. <laughs> Uh, Nori says this video should be taken to the president. Maybe he can learn a thing or two about Islam. No comment on that one. Uh, the Kamli Bengali says, can you tell David Merry Christmas to him and his family from me? Yes, I just... Uh, can, I, can I say before, <clears throat> Merry Christmas to all of you, uh, in case I don't talk to you before that. So I'm, uh, I say Merry Christmas to every uh, peaceful, Christ my brother and sister in uh, Christianity. Kamali Bengali also asked, David, will you be doing a video showing how much of a Zionist Allah is? Yeah, possibly. All right, short and sweet. Uh, Malcolm says, yes, Merry, Happy Christmas and an empowered new year to Thaddeus, David Wood, apostate prophet, inspiring philosophy, 
and all the peas, even perfect Dawa, come into the light. Uh, Cody wants to know if you believe, perfect Dawa, if you believe that ex Muslims deserve death. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, just a few weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, I was ca called Ali Dawa. And before me, there was a young ex Muslim who called in and said uh, to Ali Dawa, I want to give my Shahada. So he gave his Shahada, Ali Dawa said, Mashallah, Mashallah. And then right after that, I uh, was my turn. I said, Ali Dawa, I am also an ex-Muslim, and if me and this brother were in your hand, you would have killed us, okay? So, no, definitely, I don't believe in that stupid uh, command of, uh, you know, Bukhari, who wrote himself, and Ali Dawa and such people are proud of it. And Ali Dawa realized that he's stupid belief. That's why he removed me right away. Because I said, if me and this brother, he said, mashallah, do you see? So good, you know? I said, he would have been killed if, uh, was in your hand, and I would have been because I am myself a former apostate. Yes, please. All right, very good. And we're proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, super chat from the scripture plug, Albert. Oh, son of Adam, spend. I will spend on you. Give, then I will give you. It's difficult because you know what? These are my last few. As it is, the price is going up. The rent is going down. This is happening. Excuses. Those are excuses. You give and watch what Allah does. No excuses. And Albert did not have any excuses. He says, God bless all the brothers on the panel. Appreciate your work. Thank you very much for that. Not interested. Said good people like him need to clean house. Then if your house is unclean, why blaming others first and second? So uh, perfect Dawa, he's basically saying that you need to get rid of all of the Muslims who are causing problems in the world first, and, and then you can talk uh, about bringing people to Islam. And I think that is actually your primary focus, is it not? Exactly. And yeah. I, I, I didn't say I'm trying to bring people to Islam. I'm trying to, I always have said it, my only fight is against Muslim extremists, that they, you know, do all these stupid things under the name of my religion. So my primary, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fight is with them. And I challenge every Muslim extremist to debate me, every, any of them, okay? Yeah, and gotcha. and that's part that's part of the reason we said that we believe Perfect Dawa is sincere. We've seen other uh, Muslims and Muslim organizations like CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. Uh, they 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 only seem to be focused on on telling us to shut up about what terrorists are doing. They don't seem to be focused on telling the terrorists to stop what they're doing and so on. Uh, but yeah, we uh, yeah we've seen you we've seen you going after uh, going after. Muslims who are saying, who are who are spreading the ideas that you say you're opposed to. Since you go after those, we we take you more seriously. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Just a couple more. Uh, H. Evan, how long do you think it would take for Isa or Isa to break all the crosses in the world? And could we just manufacture more just as quickly as he breaks them? Just a fun thought to think about. No need to anyone to answer that. Uh, uh, sorry, I already read that one. Question for Perfect Dawa: How does how do you obey the commands of uh, Surah four fifty nine to obey Muhammad? And what leaders do you look to on issues? Okay, yeah, I obey uh, definitely <clears throat> uh, my messenger and uh, those who uh, go in line with uh, Quran. You know those people. Um, those scholars who uh, talk and um, you know interpret Quran in the way that uh, I see it myself as well, and I have, <clears throat> I know, as I said, I'm not the only one. Uh, I know scholars who uh, interpret the Quran in the way I do it. And uh, for example, one of them was, uh, and uh, you know, a scholar who was killed by Ayatollah Fascist Khomeini. Okay, so there are many uh, such uh, scholars as well that exist but yeah, yeah so I, I think the gist of the comment is how do you know what um 
you know, are the commands of Muhammad? How do you obey his commands when you say that there are many fabricated hadith? Yes, but, you don't yes, trust absolutely. the the, the yeah, yeah. classical grading system. If they, so go in line with Quran, go if they go in line with Quran, when Quran says that uh, Prophet Muhammad doesn't have, uh, uh, di didn't have any uh, uh, miracle and a hadith says that he split the moon, half of it fell down in uh, Ali's garden's backyard, then I say that that's a fabricated hadith because Quran says, when hadith says that, oh, uh, the hour comes uh, before this guy become old, this young guy, I say it's fabricated because Quran says that Prophet Muhammad didn't know the future. He didn't know the unseen. Okay, so it is. It goes against the uh, uh, Quran. Says people ask you about the hour. Say the the coming up hour is known only by Allah. And this hadith just says that oh, he knew when the hour come. And these these are things that I reject right away because they go against Quran. Yes, please. All right, I think that you explained yourself. Uh, super chat from Zabubas. Early, and this is indeed a sign, yet most of them are not believers. Give alone to Allah, give alone to Allah. Ride the wings of Gabriel, give alone to Allah. He says, uh, David Wood, it's 7 a.m. I am impressed. And liar, it's almost seven, liar, 7.54. <laughs> yeah, he said that at about 7.30. Too late, but, he's a liar. Yeah, wasn't even accurate when he said it. But he's impressed. Thank you for the donation. Uh, so Peter too wants to know why you perfect Dawa said that men can't beat their wives when the Quran seems to explicitly say they can. All right. Then again, we have to go <laughs> long with this discussion of interpretation. All right. So yeah, if, if it's a long answer. We'll save it for. Yeah, I have day. videos. I have videos on my channel <clears throat> explaining it. Please, if you want, you can watch them. <clears throat> Very good. So T Money said to me, why do you give the Holy Scripture to non-believers? He will only spit on it. You only give the Holy Scriptures when he's defeated. He'll never consider the word otherwise, Matthew 6, 7. The reason I use the scripture to talk to non-believers is because of the Great Commission. That we're supposed to go and make disciples of the world. And I believe that the scripture is powerful. Will everyone accept it? Of course not. But that doesn't mean that I withhold it from people. Chloe wants to know how those jihad tears taste this early in the morning. It, it's actually water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last super chat from One Way Apologetics. I can't answer this question in a 20 minute interview, nor is yeah, it okay, wise okay. to do so which is why I never brought this topic up myself. You will not find one lecture of mine about this issue. It should never be brought up in public. And I don't like these idiots, and they are idiots, wallahi. This is not something you discuss amongst the masses, ya It's not wise. I encourage anybody who is really interested to go deep to take the class. I do this class. It'll be one year later. So one way apologetic says, Salam al masih Brother Thaddeus and David, original Quran-only Christian, so Thaddeus, some love. Yeshua Akbar, and it's definitely not something that's wise to talk about in public. You should not be talking about being an original Quran, only Christian. You have to keep that to yourself, keep that a secret. All right, uh, one more relevant question for you, Perfect Dawa. Is there a Quran verse that distinguishes between fighting with weapons and fighting with words? Uh, there are verses, uh, of course, that uh, are Meccan <clears throat> verses that um, saying even uh, like you can check them. They are Meccan verses that uh, says like chapter 25, verse 52, chapter 31, verse 15, chapter 29, verse 6, <clears throat> chapter 16, verse 110, chapter 22, verse 172 uh, to 78. All these verses are talking about um, jihad without, you know, fighting, and they are Mecca verses, and one of them is uh, the the great jihad, jihad of Ak Akbar, that is only talking about struggling. Yeah, it's not about fighting with weapons. <clears throat> All right. So yeah. those who are interested can look up those verses themselves and see whether mm -hmm. or not they really distinguish between two mm -hmm. types of fighting. We'll end with this comment here 
from T Money. Perfect Dawah doesn't believe in Islam. He believes in reasoning. There's no reasoning in Islam. See Surah 5 101. I would have to agree that, uh, as I said previously, you know, Perfect Dawah is completely sincere. He believes what he's saying. But what he is supporting, what he is believing in, is nothing to do with traditional Islam. You want to use no, the term Islam, sure, whatever. But it's definitely not what has been practiced for 1,400 years. He believes in something different. He believes in not unique, right? He's not the only person who believes this, as he pointed out several times. But it certainly has been a very small minority of Muslims historically and today as well. And I'll just reiterate that I think that your, your fight would be a lot easier if you weren't trying to tie it to, you know, using the term Islam, which people understand to be something completely different than what you believe in. So that's all for us today. Uh, closing words from you, Perfect Dawa. <clears throat> Not just... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, first of all, I have to say that uh, maybe we are not uh, yet, uh, you know, the majority, but <clears throat> according to Quran, we will be the majority in the future. Uh, Quran says, my righteous people will rule and inherit the planet. So we will, uh, uh, you know, especially uh, by, by this uh, technique today that we can talk and reach our voice uh, to everyone around the world. Uh, then we will, uh, you know, become the majority, maybe take uh, decades, yeah, but we are uh, on the right uh, path and we are, you know, we will reach uh, our goal, uh, inshallah, very soon. All right. And thank you for <clears throat> being here, David Wood. Thank you. Thank you for uh, hosting it, told us, and I appreciate it very much. And please don't forget to push these extremists on their live streams to debate me because I challenge them. I want to debate them and they all run away. Okay, please. All right. Well, that is definitely some uh, faith there, some confidence there. Hasn't happened yet in 1400 years, but who knows? Maybe someday Perfect Dawah's version of Islam will be in the majority. Final thoughts from you, David. Uh, yeah, so as I was pointing out earlier, um, two main possibilities before us right now, uh, either Allah means what it really sounds like he's saying. So either he, you've got the verses and you've got what Allah says, and either he means what he sounds like he's saying, in which case these these passages are are clearly calling for violence and uh, Muslims over the centuries who are following these verses have interpreted the Quran correctly, or perfect Dawah is correct in his interpretations, in which case the Quran is uh, so unclear that the vast majority of Muslims over the centuries have um, have completely misunderstood it. Practically speaking, there's no difference between those alternatives. If Allah means what he says and he, he calls for violence, then that leads to lots of violence. If Allah doesn't mean what he says, but it really sounds like he's calling for violence, then you still get you still get violence. So there's no difference, uh, practically speaking. I'll stick with my method of trying to show uh, Muslims that Muhammad is not a true prophet and therefore they shouldn't be following the Quran. But for those Muslims who are going to remain Muslims, I do wish Perfect Dawah all the success in the world because if someone's going to follow Islam, it would be better for all of us if they are following a more peaceful version of Islam that doesn't call for the violent subjugation of the entire world. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Pindakas says, if there's one Muslim I pray for, he would be it. Come to Christ and live in the light. And I just wanted to say, encourage every, I want to encourage everyone in the chat to be praying for Perfect Dawa and other Muslims. Power of prayer is definitely worth your time. Thank you all for joining us today. I will be back in one hour on Lloyd de Young's channel. We will be discussing the Sharia with MENJ, the Muslim apologist. Shocking that he agreed to, to that discussion, um, especially with Lloyd. It was quite, quite a bulldog, but it should be fun. 
Should be very interesting to see how that goes. When this stream ends, you'll get a redirect to that. I'll post the link in the chat as well. So I hope to see some of you in an hour. Otherwise, I will be off the rest of this weekend doing some in-person evangelism. Be back on Tuesday with Mary to discuss whether or not Christian is borrowed. Chris, Chris, Chris Muss is borrowed from pagan customs. Till we meet again, God bless everyone. Take this material, use it in your conversations with Muslims. Go and serve the Lord.